<laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Isn't this fun? Um, welcome to the China Show. Make sure we're all up and running here. Sorry. Have to excuse the last minute running around. That's it's, uh, how it is. Episode 134. Yes. Sir. For some reason, one of our microphones was on the floor. It was, and that is not something you want. No. Did you, did you drop the mic? Uh, I did not drop the mic. <laughs> I did not put it down there. Okay, anyway. Because we were installing some lighting. Yeah. Um, so we had to move Bear with us, guys. You know, we're always evolving. It doesn't evolving. matter. Yeah. Let's get into it. We've got quite the show for you today. Uh, episode 134 of The China Show. Let's get right into it. We're going to saunter right into it with what's new. Okay. And uh, what's new today is we've got... What was that? Nothing falling off the roof, is it? No, we're good. No, it's some of the stuff that we use to put the lights up. Okay. Uh, what's new today, guys, is we have some beautiful art for you again. You guys remember the famous artist from last time where he doesn't even look at what he's painting? This yeah. guy looks. He looks. But he injects a certain uh, pizzazz. Let's take a look. I mean, let's just see. <laughs> Go back to that. I just want to... Yeah. Would you hang that up in your house? It reminds me if you're painting the wall of your house and you put down some cloth or something, <laughs> you, you know, like all no, the just like the paper. Yeah, the you paper, know, that yeah. paper, yeah. That's what it is. I think we've come up with a great idea. No, I think that would look better because it had different colors. And <laughs> it's true. Let's, let's just see that one more time. <laughs> um... I wonder if he's got a developing mind. Yeah, he probably does. Yeah. He looks he looks like that guy. Um, but I do want to go back to that real quick. I just okay. want to I want to point this out so you guys have some context. That's a great freeze frame. Oh, oh okay. Where, where he's like okay. I just love that he was just screaming there. But anyway. Yeah, that's part of the it's performance art, right? It's gotta be. Yeah, so what happens in China is that the wrong kind of people end up in positions of power slash respect. Yeah. So you'll get professors that have didn't go to school. Mm. You'll get doctors that don't have degrees. You'll get uh, freaking government officials that didn't graduate kindergarten. Yeah. You know? Sure. You get these people because what happens is... You get Xi Jinping. Yeah, I mean, you get <laughs> Xi Jinping. What yeah. happens is in, a, in Chinese society, uh, when they demonize all the intellectuals, yeah. and then they put the peasants in power under Chairman Mao, yep. you are in a situation where you are rewarding the people that were bullying their way to the top. Correct. You're not not like studying their way to the top or mm. being altruistic or helping society. Yeah. Bullying their way to the top. Correct. I mean, that's how it works. You have to, you know what they say? Uh, shit floats to the top or turds float to the top or whatever. Sure. So anyway, <laughs> respected artists, <laughs> yes. like in this scenario, mm -hmm. they work their way to the top. <laughs> they float to the top. They float to the top. And now we get to watch um, <laughs> yeah. Watch their videos. We'll, we'll take it one more time before we move on. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I like that they're like cheering them on. Mm, sell it for a million dollars. Okay, what, what do we got next? Here's obviously a joke, right? Oh, yeah. It's just, so it's just people are making fun of everything is quarantine. This is a truck driver, by the way. Yeah, they use these stickers uh, mm -hmm. when they go through uh, different areas like toll booths and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they put stickers on their doors so that they're locked down in their truck. So they they're not allowed to leave. COVID, yeah. But in this uh, checkpoint, they put stickers on his willy. Well, you think he? I think he put them yeah, in there just as sure. a joke, yeah. because a lot of the truck drivers have been complaining that they're not allowed to use the bathroom because yeah. they're in their trucks. They they go through a checkpoint. They get like quarantine stickers, and they're not allowed to open. Not allowed to break that seal. In other words, they're not allowed to exit their truck, and they don't have toilets built into the trucks, right? Uh -huh. So it's kind of a just a making fun of the fact that he's not allowed to pee. Yeah. He took it of his truck and put it there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on to something a little more serious. Uh, what do we got here? Portuguese guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe his name was, let me just pull it up here. His name was John, Joseph John. His name was? His name is Joseph okay. John. I don't want to be too grim. Yeah, which one is it out of that list? I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Everyone's got masks on. Uh, yeah, Joseph John was... Good, good one, yeah. Uh, does it matter? You guys of course it, it matters, the poor guy. Okay, so what's happening to Joseph John? I don't even know if he's in this photo. It could oh. be the lawyers. This Maybe is, it's the lawyers. This is in the article. Okay. Joseph John appeared. Does that matter? <laughs> I mean, you've got to put a name to a face, right? No one has a face there, do they? 
He's the guy taking the photo. He's the guy taking the photo. <laughs> anyway, yeah. He's like, love yeah. to be here, guys. Yeah, right, anyway, yeah. he appeared at the West Kowloon Magistrate's Court mm-hmm. in Hong Kong. Right. In front of the principal magistrate, Peter Law, one of the city's handpicked national security judges. So you guys have to remember, Hong Kong ended up with this national security law, mm. which stopped all the millions of protesters. Um, actually, the protesters were out there to protest against this law. What it means is that um, you, if you're against the Chinese government, basically, it's considered a national security problem. Yeah. And so you are liable for punishment uh, by mainland Chinese law, more yes. or less, right? So if you say anything uh, against Xi Jinping, against the Chinese government, even online, yeah, you are uh, responsible for this law. Like, you, you could be tried under this law, the Correct. national security law. and. They said that they weren't going to use this unless it was like very egregious. Offenses. I mean, that was their whole thing. They're trying to push it through and they were saying, don't worry about it. This is only for like extreme cases. Yeah, we still have yeah. like a rule based society, a law based yeah, society. Yeah, yeah. So everyone was protesting against this because they were like, no, it's going yeah. to be abused. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It gets forced through anyway and it's being abused. So there's yeah. a reason they were protesting. Yeah, this guy, uh, he mm-hmm. posted um, statements on Facebook and internet websites. Like okay. Instagram and Telegram with seditious intent. So probably something against the government. It says, yeah. the 40-year-old allegedly intended to bring in tr- into hatred or contempt to excite disaffection against central authorities and the Hong Kong government. Um, so basically, he was uh, not given bail. He was denied bail. And now this is one of those cases where we need to pay attention to because this mm-hmm. is a person from a, from a different country. Yeah. It's a Portuguese guy. Portuguese guy who posted online. Yeah, online. And is right. now, fall, it, he's been arrested and is now going to be tried under the national security law. So you as a as a foreigner, and I say foreigner as in a non-Chinese or a non-Hong Kong person, yeah, can uh, post something online when you're in Germany, when you're sure. in America, when you're in Canada, and you post a Winnie the Pooh meme. Yeah. And it says like down with the CCP or something. Mm-hmm. If they find out and you are on a layover... Yeah, and in you Hong stop Kong. over in Hong Kong and say you're on the way to Japan or Australia. Sure. You have a layover in Hong Kong. They can rip you off that plane and they can throw you in jail over a national security law. I just want you guys to understand. Yeah, that. it is. It is yeah. actually that extreme. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awful. All right. What do we got um, besides that? Oh, man. No, <sighs> this, this is, is like, so made annoying. Sick. And I, you know yeah. when. You know, I always say this. Yeah. I say, I wish we weren't right. Yeah. A lot of the times, I just wish we could be proven wrong. Please, yeah. please don't prove us right every single time. Yeah, yeah, because we called this. We called this. Remember when Bannerman put his banners out there, right? Yes. Very brave man in Beijing. He put his banners out there and he had a couple of sayings, you know, like, we don't want a cultural revolution, we want open reform. Yeah. That kind of thing, down with Xi Jinping. So people, what they were doing is they were going around and they were actually posting, um, not posting, airdropping um, documents and flyers. Because you can do that with an Apple phone. It's kind of like Bluetooth. If you've got right. a picture on there, you can you can try it out now. Try and annoy your co- co-workers at work or wherever you are right now. If you've got a picture, just go like share and you yeah. choose airdrop. Yeah. And it'll search for any Apple device. I was just checking nearby. mine to see if I could, if yeah. it has the same problem. It does not. Yeah, of course not. Okay, and then like if you see someone's phone or laptop or something there that's an Apple device, you click on it and it'll pop up a prompt on their one. It will say, yes. "Someone is trying to send you a picture. Do you want to accept it? Yes or no?" So people were getting these on the subway. It'd pop up and say, "Xi Jinping is trying to send you a picture," and if you clicked yes, it would come up with a flyer with Bannerman's demands on it. Okay, so it's kind of like a covert way for people to spread the message. So what Apple has now done is capitulated to China, just like we guessed they would. Mm-hmm. And if they have now changed the Apple operating system, the iOS operating system in China only, mm-hmm. so that AirDrop has to be turned on manually and it can only stay on for 10 minutes. Yeah. So in other words, your phone will no longer be able to just receive AirDrop. You have to go in there and say, I wanna receive from everyone And it only lasts 10 minutes and then it turns off. Correct. So that prevents people from being able to anonymously try to send you something. Yeah. So that's Apple bowing down to the CCP once again uh, because the CCP is like, no, we can't have people being able to freely send stuff. I mean, I was so, like, I was almost like uh, my mind was pushing it away. I was like, there's no way this is true. 
it was a rumor. Mm-hmm. And then when it was confirmed, I was like, this is this is just not okay. No. What have we done to get ourselves in a position where a company responsible for freedom of t- telecommunications mm-hmm. is capitulating with one of the worst governments in the entire world and then expecting everyone to be okay with it? Yeah. Because here's the deal. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm trying to battle with. Well, I was like, when we cover this, what, do we, what kind of solution do we offer? What do you do? What do you do here? Like, how do you make, how do you pressure a company to, to say, what are you doing? Like, you, you can't do that. Sure. You know, this is absolutely insane. I mean, this is, what's next, Yeah. right? What's next? Well, here's the thing. Apple doesn't want to lose its big market share in China. It also has most of its factories and production in China. Okay? So from their point of view, they're like, oh, no, we're going to have to do something or the government's going to buck boycott us again or get its people to hate us and not buy our products or give us trouble with our factories and so on. But that's bullshit. I think Apple should turn it the other way around. I think Apple should be like, listen, China, we bring so much to your country. Not only do we offer huge amounts of work opportunity for all the laborers that work at our factories and all the cheap labor and all the skilled labor and everything in between, all the logistics, all of the everything. All right? Because... Millions of jobs are created because of Apple being in China. So many, like everything that works around getting those factories running, even if it's a plumber or, or somebody who comes in to screw in a light bulb in a factory, it's, there's work being generated, okay? Never mind the actual workers. Logistics, all the chips and all the stuff being sent to China there to build it. The factories themselves, the trade, the fact that China get so much money off of all the sales of the iPhones and so on. Apple should be like, no, if you want us to stay here, we're going to just not capitulate to your bullshit. That's how it should be. But unfortunately, it's the other way around. Apple's sitting there saying, oh, sorry, master. We'll turn off that. We don't want any kind of freedom of speech or anyone being able to say what they think in the borders of China. So we'll just do what you say. It shouldn't be that way. It should be the opposite way, right? Absolutely agree. Anyway, that's what's going on with Apple. It's disgusting. Apple has capitulated to the CCP again and clamped down on freedom of speech. And you know what pisses me off the most? Is that they won't do that elsewhere. No. In America, remember they had like some Al-Qaeda terrorists that had plotted and killed a bunch of people or whatever, and the FBI wanted access to the phone of an Al-Qaeda guy or whatever, and Apple was like, no. So that's the biggest slap in the face is that... They're like, well, we'll do it within the laws, right? So the law in America says we don't have to capitulate to authorities. Yeah. So they won't. Yeah. But the law in China says you have to capitulate to authorities and you have to change the actual software, how it runs. Yeah. And they're like, okay. Isn't it just bullshit? The double yeah. standards is what gets me. Yeah. Because if, That's the biggest if, part. If Apple wants to sit there and be like, oh, we, we believe in privacy and we believe in freedoms and stuff like that. And they're all... Yeah. They're all into promoting minority rights and fringe groups' rights. And, you know, they're a very friendly, diverse company. Mm -hmm. But them doing something like this for mainland China flies in the face of all of that. It deletes all of that. Yes. It gets rid of all of that. Like, you can be the most happy, great, loving, open-armed company in the world, but you've just now suppressed 1.4 billion people with your bullshit. So that all gets thrown off the table. Yeah. Sorry, Apple. You're just a horrible dictator worshiper. You know? Yes. Anyway, let's move on. Man, what a disappointment. Okay, now this is also a terrible disappointment. Okay, yep. this is the this is unfortunately something we've talked about a lot in the past, and here it is in action. Um, for those of you listening, it doesn't sound great. In fact, I'll turn the volume down. There's a lot of yeah. You don't need any any volume. Yeah, I'll turn no it off actually. Um, what we've got here is we've got some firemen, and they're struggling with a fire hydrant. There is a building on fire, okay? And um, they're struggling and struggling with this fire hydrant. And, well, they don't get it working, and the uh, apartment burns down, and presumably lives were lost in the process. Yeah. Okay? And you know why? Maybe you could tell everyone why it didn't work. It's fake. Fake fire hydrant. I mean, you know, this is the kind of thing that would make people go crazy, like they'd be like, "Are you are you kidding? There's no way." Yeah. You, if you if you understand China, yeah, then you would understand that this is so normal. Yeah. 
to do things just for appearances. Even if something works temporarily, you get like a whole new uh, apartment complex with beautiful fountains and a pool. Yeah. And then a month later, it's covered in algae. And then the month la later after that, it's filled in or stopped. It's derelict, right? Yeah. You get stuff like that, which is just for appearances. And then you also get situations where, oh, the, the city said that we need to have 50 fire hydrants here, yes. right? But they're never going to use them. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Like, who cares, right? So they don't hook it up. They just put something they just put it put there in, the in the ground. They just put it there in the ground, yeah. Right. And this is, this is the, uh, you know, you don't usually get video coming out of China that shows the aftermath of these kind of problems. Yeah. But you have the same problem that we've seen personally, um, where you have elevators. That elevators and up, escalators. Fall, fall down. Escalators eating people. That was a huge, that was a huge epidemic in China. It just happened a few times uh, yeah. last week, actually. Again? again? Yeah. Like actual, es like escalators in shopping malls yeah. killing people. And you yeah. think to yourself, how is that even possible? Yeah. Like, has you, have you ever heard of escalators killing, like, not one, but lots of people? I'm sure it's happened, but it's, it, it's an epidemic. Yeah, and China. it turns out because none of them were maintained. Yes. And so, you know, certain, the, like, the plates, when you get off, you stand on this plate, and that, if that's not properly maintained, it's not checked, and the screws come loose, it can collapse, it can fall in, and people are being, falling in and getting crushed. Yeah. Weird stuff like that. And it's because people... In China, it's all about face, like we said, okay? It's all about, okay, we're supposed to do X, Y, Z. Let's mm -hmm. just pretend we did it. Yeah. Every time you walk into a, a, a lift, like in your apartment building, you'll see a little stamp up there that it's been inspected. It's supposed to be inspected every couple of months or whatever, and it's got a stamp and it's signed and everything. And so... Most important is the first stamp you get. Yeah. And they install it. Yes. Right? And so it's all about peace of mind. You see that stamp and yeah. you think, great. Then you find out that they just pay someone to give them the stamp. Yeah. I mean, you know? we've said this a million times, but in my apartment building, mm -hmm. got, they got the stamp. They paid off the, the yeah. company. Yeah. They paid off the government. Uh, corrupt at, corrupt is, is hell, this country, right? And then the elevator collapsed and there's family inside. Yeah. And it could have been me. I mean, that was like, I used it that day <laughs> that yeah. it happened. You know I, what mean, I mean, also think about it. The worker himself who gets sent out to do the inspections, mm -hmm. it's much easier for him to not inspect. Think about it. So the worker himself, he'll just go there, he'll go into the elevator, he'll just put a thing up there, oh, it's fine, without actually going yeah. through the effort of inspecting. Of just put the sticker in and walk off, because, hey, not my problem, I'm not being paid money. Also, the, the building company doesn't want to pay for uh, any problems. Yeah. So if he looks at it and he's like, hey, there's some issues here, they'll just pay him off to sure. get the stamp, you understand? There's like, it's at every level, yeah. right? cutting corners. And so here's here's at a level where you can directly see the results of that kind of uh, I don't even what know what you'd call it societal norm yeah societal yeah. norm and negligence yes yeah. it's awful stuff guys and when people's lives are at risk for instance having a working fire hydrant instead of a fake one that was just installed because they said you need five fire hydrants in this area or mm. whatever you know this is what happens mm. so. Um, as much as you see coming out of China where they keep showing you, look at what we've done this time. Yeah. Look at this amazing new technology. The world should learn from us from uh, coal mining. This yeah. is a new thing. Why don't you explain that? So, you see, there's, another, there's a new push coming out of the, the Chinese media right now all about coal mining. And they're trying to push the fact that um, Huawei and 5G and all of this is making coal mining so safe because miners don't even need to work anymore. They just sit in like a room and, and remote control the mining equipment. It's fantasy. It's garbage. It's like Elon Musk's Hyperloop. It's one of those things that, yes, you can make diagrams and yes, you can put together fancy presentations and say it all works and it's all great, but it's not implemented and it can't be implemented properly. It's just a good idea. There's pilot programs out there where they can try stuff, but the reality is that the coal mining industry in China is the most dangerous in the world. One of the, one of the most dangerous Seriously. industries, period, in the yeah. whole world. And uh, coal miners in China uh, suffer greatly, you know? I, I had students that fathers mm -hmm. died in coal yeah. mining accidents. If I know someone personally, it's a problem. So it's very annoying when you see Chinese state media going out there and the pundits and the people working for Chinese state media saying, look... We can all learn from China because yeah. of its high-tech coal mining. Meanwhile, it's like the worst in the world. There's no safety standards. I love how the Chinese state <laughs> yeah. people, like the you know the bots, basically, are saying that America can learn from China's coal safety. And yeah. it's like, dude, that is just a slap in the face to the 
thousands of coal miners that have died unnecessarily in oh, China. Yeah, more than thousands. Th I mean, just, uh, I mean, over time, I guess, more sure. than thousands, but lots yeah. and lots of people. Yeah, lots right? of people, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. so that's, that's an unfortunate thing. And that's pretty much the end of what's new. So I think we'll take a couple Super Chats now that we're all nice and cheerful. And then we can move on to our main segment, which, of course, is um, Soft Power Hour. Erin Angela says she's uh, PLA military is totally outrageous. Mm, it certainly don't, is. Don't they know that they have uh, Taiwan has missiles aimed at the Three Gorges Dam? They should live in the fear. <laughs> do we still have, we do we have? I don't think we fear? have any of those. I think we've we we'll bring throw some Miranda. back. No, I can throw throw, throw Miranda. Okay. You gotta understand, China. That's that's correct. Good enough. Kristen Kesley, thank you very much. Quinn F. Our who have searched American city of Ontario and Pennsylvania. Where are your wedding, Windstone? Asking for a friendly. I guess <laughs> okay. this is an agent sent out by Must be, China must Docs. be, yeah. Koala1203, thank you. Uh, hey, anyhow, Dan Dong, what's up? Oh, yeah, definitely. I could get one of those if I can find it. There. Court of Dan Dong. Like figuring out where everything is here. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Happy uh, V Diddy says happy for a die Friday. Thank you. There are two luxury condo buildings in New York City that are being funded, developed, and marketed by Chinese nationals. It's like they couldn't build enough within mainland China. How is this allowed and legal? <laughs> this this is happening in Vancouver. I mean, and all over Canada as well. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I've been reading a lot on this. You know, you'll get uh, very rich Chinese um, investors will come and actually buy like a a house, like a nice house or something. They knock it down and build like you know, apartments there instead. Mm -hmm. It just makes more sense. They can hire, out, rent out more and earn more money off of a smaller yeah, I mean, piece of land. Yeah, from a business sense, it makes a lot yeah. of sense. Think about it. Uh, real estate overseas is one of the best investments for rich Chinese people, whether they're corrupt or not. Yeah. You know, because when you've got money in China, you know it's only a matter of time before that money gets taken from you. And it could be frozen by the government, you know, it could, anything can happen to it, right? You can't own property in China, you lease it, but when you buy property overseas, it's yours for life. And you can pass it down to your children. Yeah. And it's one of the most stable forms of investment. It's better than buying crypto or gold or whatever else, right? So that's where investment goes. And like I said, whether it's corrupt money um, or legitimate money, that's where it ends up. And so, unfortunately, the rest of the world's real estate has become an investment engine for rich Chinese people, which has driven up the uh, real estate costs everywhere around the world. Mm -hmm. Because, unfortunately, um, they don't really have many other options. Nice. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I like that your soundboard is in frame and a screwdriver and a mic, a mic holder. Oh, you mean uh, uh, this is... I don't know if you guys realize this, but we are in a makeshift studio right now. Hi, we're doing do you hear it? Is it any because different? Because we're not currently in the normal place. But what yeah. we can do is do our best. <laughs> yes. Please bear with us. Yes. Um, should we move on to our main topic? Uh, no, we need to move on to our sponsor today. Oh, of course. Sorry about that. We're going to start out with uh, Five Minute News, everyone. What do you have to say about these lovely people? Five Minute News is a great uh, news source. It's a audio style news so you listen to it before your breakfast or while you're eating breakfast i should say um and it's all the the best most highlighted news stories so you don't have to sit through a huge feed and compete for different like stories and sit through apple news or msnbc or cnn or bbc it's just the most important stuff straight to your ears in the morning yeah so many news networks but which one to trust journalist anthony davis of the five minute news podcast provides a trusted voice amongst the noise Featuring only the three most important world news stories of the day published Monday through Friday, the 5-Minute News Podcast fills a forgotten sector of the news industry. That's true news. Factual, verified, and responsible news gathering without the need for dramatization, embellishment, or theatrics. 5-Minute News cuts through the noise of legacy cable and network television news whilst going deeper uh, than traditional radio news bulletins. 5-Minute News focuses on inequality, health, and climate issues with the goal of making politics relatable. The podcast offers no opinion, no bias, just the facts. Five Minute News is published early in the morning, so you can listen while you have breakfast and lets you get on with your day knowing that you're fully informed. Subscribe today to the daily news podcast that matters at 5minute.news. That's 5minute.news, and the link is down in the description. And by the way, it's completely free. Yeah, it's good, man. I think it's great. You know, audio is very important. Yeah. You know, if you close your eyes, 
you can still listen to stuff. Very true. You don't need to watch it. No. And if you close your ears, you can still watch stuff. I actually but prefer can you listening. understand it? Yeah. I prefer <laughs> listening to podcasts than, uh, than, than watching them sometimes. It's actually really good. Very convenient, especially in the sure. car and stuff. You better not You better not be driving around watching stuff, by the way. <laughs> you best not be doing it's that. It's probably not a good idea. Remember yeah. they used to have like uh, DVD players in cars? Yeah. You know drivers were watching that shit. Dude, come on. We filmed people. Remember like yeah. when we, yeah, we drove did. to LA and there's people just watching on their phones mm. while they're driving mm. in traffic? It's like, don't do that, please. No, please do not. <laughs> and also like drug addicts running on the side of the road. Yes. We got to do that. Hey, you know, just, just an aside, a completely different aside here, but like somebody was yeah. complaining the other day, right? And they were like, hey, listen... Why do you only show bad sides of China, you guys? Why don't you show, like, the good sides? It must have been a Wuma, right? Yeah, it's a Wuma. Yeah, okay. They're like, why don't you ever show the bad sides of America? I was like, have you seen <laughs> the videos that we filmed in America? So I pointed, we, <laughs> we did a video. Yeah, we did a video on ADV China that's called, like, we found uh, white, peop white Chinese people or something like yeah. that, right? And in that video, we were in America, we were uh, in, in California. We drove to a place called the Salton Sea. Well, we yeah. rode our motorcycles. Yes. We saw disgusting trailer parks, people living in serious poverty, which we filmed. We got yeah. drone shots of it, everything. We saw a crack den. I walked into an abandoned, like, uh, I think it was an old could fire have been, station. Could have been any drug. We don't know. Whatever it was, yeah. there was literally feces on the wall and in the toilet, like there was an old abandoned toilet piled up with feces. Yeah. There was a guy with a syringe walking around. I mean, he wasn't even up. hiding it. He was literally walking around with yeah. it in his hand, just like, I yeah. said he was blessing the land with it because he kept shaking it all. Fil was filmed him. Around. And I'm like, what is wrong with people? Can they not see that I filmed the bad parts of everywhere? We filmed life. the best, like we, we filmed film we everything. We, we filmed good. Go, we don't go out yeah. to see it. You if you just... see a bad thing, you film it. It's yeah. like this is ridiculous. If you see a good thing, you film it. Look how cool this is. Yeah. That's how we life. do it. So this whole narrative that um, we're biased or something like that is no. Look, we show the bad sides of America too. Yeah, you know exactly. that's what we do. Was, yeah, it's it kind of a funny been... thing. Yeah, it was just so funny to be able to you know counter it with. Facts. Dude, that's just one video. How yeah. many? So many. Anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. yeah, we show we show some good and some some bad everywhere we go. That's what we do. We observe and we like to complain about problems because that's how you get them fixed. Joshua King says the east side of the Salton Sea is a shit shit show. What's the west side like? Is that like nice? I don't know. We 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 only went to the bad part. What was that place called? Something Desert Shores or something? Desert Shores. I think it was called that yeah. Lake Shore Desert Shores. Desert like Shores, that. I think. Something like that. Word from the bird. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you should watch that video sometime if That's you have a choice. Video, yeah. Let's move on to Soft Power Hour, guys. This is where we talk about what's happening and how China's trying to change your mind, be it good or bad. Yeah. Mostly in a bad way. Yes. Okay. So there's the title of our thing is that rich people are trying to flee China. They're trying to get out of China. They're yeah. trapped, right? Yeah. This is true. Okay. How many was it again? 10,000 millionaires or whatever it was? Oh, it was just in one go. In one, yeah, 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 in one go left. Rich people are leaving, okay? And that's because they know that the clampdown on, well, being a capitalist basically is happening at the moment. China's yeah. closing down. And um, the reason they got rich in the first place and the methods that they use to get rich are no longer really possible. Yeah. Okay? People know what's, they can see the writings on the wall. The rich people yeah. know. The rich people have left, especially people in Shanghai who have experienced the lockdowns and so on. Yeah. Their illusions of China being a better, greener pasture mm -hmm. is now gone, right? Because it was like that for a while, you know? China is growing, very prosperous. Some people that had gone overseas to start a life and they have a career and all that kind of nonsense, they then see China suddenly just growing crazily, mm -hmm. you know? new infrastructure popping up in a year, new high-speed rails, you know, a lot of money being thrown into the tech industry and into all this stuff. So they got enticed back to China, a lot of people. They're like, okay, we're going to go back there. This is where we're going to go make money. We're going to find our mountain of gold or whatever. They get back to China. Things are rapidly growing. They are, they are seeing a great change, but now they're seeing the opposites happening. Yeah. Okay, things are closing down. If you're a millionaire or a billionaire, you better watch your back because the Chinese government's coming after you eventually. And they na nab you for whatever reason and they freeze your assets and they take your company from you and all this kind of nonsense. Freeze your ass. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so people are like, trying now they're trying to get their money out and they're trying to get out. But there's this awful situation now where it's incredibly difficult to leave China. 
They're making it harder and harder for people to get passports. It's getting you know? harder and harder to leave. Yeah, it is. You got a lot of song lyrics in my head right now. Yeah, I exactly. But no, quite seriously, it's getting incredibly difficult for people to actually just leave right now. You can't casually travel, that's for sure. No. Um, no. And uh, we've had a lot of anecdotal um, situations, people reaching out and saying, hey, listen, I've been applying for a passport for my Chinese wife for like a year now, and they haven't been giving her one. Yeah. So yeah. we've heard success stories as well, thankfully, mm -hmm. but it's becoming more of a norm to be very worried about this. Yeah. Uh, so what's been going on is that there have been a lot of uh, WeChat messages going around. Yeah. Right. And I'm only going to show you the translated ones because yeah. it's not going to be useful to read the Chinese ones for you. Mm -hmm. So um, it's fairly accurate translation. Basically, uh, people have these WeChat groups. And if you don't use WeChat, you can kind of think of it like a WhatsApp group. Right? Sure. So you have, you know, on WhatsApp, if you guys use WhatsApp, you can have a group chat. Or on Instagram DMs, you can have a group chat on there. Mm -hmm. Twitter DMs. Uh, or think about it like your uh, text messaging. You can have a group of people in your SMS, like your text messaging, iMessage, things mm -hmm. like that. And you'll have a theme for these groups in WeChat. So this is like, just think of China's messaging service. And let's say this group is called... Uh, planning to leave, mm. right? Or this group is called, I want to move to America. Or just immigrate abroad. Or, or immigrate or... abroad. Or even uh, invest abroad, yeah. right? Do things abroad, travel, even travel groups, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of these are getting smacked with notices from the government that mm -hmm. are telling them they ha either have to shut them down, yeah. right? Or they're just getting uh, notices that they will be shut down, yeah. right? And when people were looking into it and looking at the government notices, what it was being said was that if you are talking about how to get money out of China, yeah, not just that, if you're talking about how to get a passport to travel abroad, and if you're talking about anything other than using your passport for student exchange mm -hmm. or for um, like a government-sponsored trip type thing, yeah, then you're not allowed to talk about passport applications yeah. or immigration processes or tour groups, things like yeah. this. Yeah. And so there's huge amounts of these tour like tour group companies and WeChat groups that are surrounding immigration in general. Mm -hmm. How do I move to Canada? How do I go visit my daughter? How do yeah. I, you know, this kind of stuff that are that are getting wiped out? Yeah. And actually it's becoming a law to not be allowed to talk about these things mm -hmm. because unless you unless you follow or adhere strictly to the guidelines, I'm translating in my head. Yeah. If you strictly adhere to the guidelines of the immigration policy of yes. China. Yeah. If you're not doing that, and that's, like I said, it's covering the swath of things, right? Mm. If you're not following that, then your, your group gets wiped out, and then you could potentially get into trouble. Mm. So this has caused like a firestorm. Uh, some people are getting these notices, and then people on Weibo were talking to each other, on WeChat were talking to each other in private and saying, like, what's going on? Like, sure. is the immigration policy changing like crazy? And some mm. people at the top that work in this kind of field, that have these kind of companies, are now going out and saying, Listen, there must be something massive changing in China's immigration policy, so mm. everyone stay on your toes, be careful. Yeah. And that in turn has caused a massive another wave of yeah. people trying to leave. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and finding all kinds of crazy ways, going through the Kazakh border, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get through Hong Kong, all of these kind of dialogues was about it, how much was it Turkey or Hungary? Yeah, Turkey. It's Turkey is a big one. Yeah. Like if you but that's, in, that's invest starting there. to get less popular. Yeah. Now. It was like you can go there and if you invest a certain amount of money you can get a passport and then you can get into the EU or like yeah. the US easy. Things so like that. this mm. obviously doesn't pertain to people that have like a Chinese wife or something. You can mm. still if you're married to someone, you can still get out if you are a foreign citizen of another sure. country. It's it's not it's not easy. But, but it's not easy to get no. your wife or your Chinese girlfriend out, like, you know, mm -hmm. unless they've already got an established visa and an Correct. established passport and everything. My, my point is, it's yeah. not impossible. No, it's what not. What is becoming impossible for some of these people is discussion around leaving if you don't have those connections. Yeah, right? if you have, if you haven't started any yeah. of these processes, yeah. now it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, it's pretty <clears> wild <throat> what's happening. So... Keep your eyes out on this. Uh, we've saw, we've seen this probably for the past year year or two. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen China cracking down on letting people leave. Period. Yeah. But now there's another. It looks like another wave of this. Um, almost like another layer of of cracking down on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to prevent a bunch of things. They're trying to prevent talent from leaving. Yes. Brain drain. Um, there's a huge brain drain problem in China, and Xi Jinping is actually, if, you, if you're a Chinese nationalist, you'll think he's done a really good job on this. He's mm -hmm. done a good job in keeping Chinese people put, uh, yeah. whether legally, extra-legally, or by people's choice or not, yeah. uh, but keeping people put in China because the brain drain uh, of engineers, uh, uh, programmers, uh, people that the key Chinese industries need 
in their domestic. That's why places like America thrive is because yeah. the best minds from it's attracted yeah. from India and China and so on they want to come to America and yes. they leave China and they yes. come to America and they do very well here. Yeah, because it's rewarded. Yeah, and you get to live a better life. You do. So that's why people come to America, for instance. From China. Yeah. But if you're not allowed to leave, or if it's difficult for you to leave, then China gets to keep your talents. Yeah. So China, you know? China's done it. Well, Xi Jinping has done a good job of mm. making people stay. And yeah. I suspect this is just another way of getting people to not move their money out. Mm. And one of the huge, you know, uh, indicators of this was when the whole real estate situation started to falter. Yeah. And you saw big companies like Evergrande and even some smaller ones. Sure. Uh, they were just not returning on their investment or not a lot, giving people their, their houses or, or money. Yeah. Right. Either one of them. When that was kind of blowing up, you were you were seeing people finally talk to each other about it and say, hey, maybe we should stop investing in this, this real estate sector. Mm. Right. And so what was the next best option? Hey, well, traditionally, investing in property was a good way to combat the instability of China. China's a very in- unstable country. Right. right? Just, despite what you might hear from the Chinese government, it's a very bad place to have your money. Yeah. Uh, because you can't get it out and they can freeze it and it's nationalized, right? The Chinese government actually ultimately has to say over everything you do. Mm. So when you can't have liquid capital and you can't move your investments around and stuff, what's the next best thing? Well, probably get the money out of China. Correct. So you have people that are you know, in the lost generation, you know, 60, 70 years old that have, let's say some of them have money. They can be as nationalist as can be. They can be the biggest Xi Jinping lover. They can be red to the core, yes. right? Love the party mm-hmm. above all. They can go to their square and sing communist songs all day. Yeah. But when push comes to shove and their money is on the table, they know, and they're not stupid, yeah. that the, the government's not going to take care of them. So what's mm-hmm. the next step? The next logical step is to invest abroad. Yeah. I mean, I, I was looking at 60, 70 year olds buying crypto. Yeah. I mean, these are people that have no idea what this is. They're, they know what to do. They yeah. know how to get their money out. Right? They do. They're trying to stop that ultimately. Well, I mean, they banned Bitcoin and yeah. stuff in yeah. China for that reason. For that reason. Because yeah. too many people were getting money out. Yeah. You know, it was too easy. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, to summarize this situation... It's always been very easy to go onto the Chinese internet and search, how do I immigrate to America, for instance? And it comes up with tons of loopholes and scams and ways to do it. I mean, I did a video on the whole um, birth tourism thing. Remember, I just went and translated some websites. You go on there and they're like, oh, it's easy. We'll teach you how to lie to immigration. So get pregnant. Make sure you're X amount pregnant. And then you come and you just wear loose clothing and you don't you lie to them yeah. about why you're coming and all that you sort of thing. Hawaii. Yeah, or Guam. Mm. Um, but, you know, you go to America. Like, they had they had places in California. And on the yeah. website that I translated, they were like, you can even choose if you want a Chinese doctor or a Western doctor. Yep. We've got it all lined up. You have the luxury up. to choose. You, you choose that, and we've got, like... How to do immigration fraud. Yeah, they teach you how to do immigration <laughs> fraud on the website. Yeah. It's like, this is what you say when they ask you these questions. You yeah. lie to them about this. You like lie when, to them about when, that. Like uh, when the immigration talks to you about this, this, and this. This yeah. is what you say in this order. Yeah, it's like when they ask you how long yeah. you're going to stay, tell them two weeks. Yeah. Don't worry. When you're here, you'll be here for six months. Yeah. That kind of thing. All these lies. It yeah. was very easy to, to translate. And then yeah. another part of the, that whole thing is like... We've got apartments here. You just come, you stay in the apartment. We have your food ready for you. We set you up once. And then they're like, once you've given birth, then we'll help you get the passport for your child. And then you can open up uh, this kind of a bank account, this kind of a trust fund in your child's name. And that's another way to funnel money out. Yeah. But this is public yeah. on the internet that I could go read it and translate it yeah. right there. That's the kind of thing that they're clamping down on right now. If you go search, like, how can I immigrate to America? All these, like, oh, one, two, three step stuff, that's being deleted. Yeah. That's being... Mo- most of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, being, it's being scrutinized. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not as blatant as it was yeah. before. Yeah. But just to let you know that that kind of thing is what we're trying to talk about here. It's those kind of yes. steps on how to immigrate, the loopholes that you can take advantage of. The Chinese government is cramp- look, clamping down on that, cramping yeah, as well, I for guess. Sure. You know, like, ah, cramp, you know, these guys trying to leave, you know, you know, (laughs) oh, my heart, you know. Um, But, you know, that's what's going on uh, with this nonsense. And it's not good because it shows you the intent of the government is to. That's what I was going to say. It's about the intent. Yeah, it's to stop people, the freedom of movement. It's really to send a message to and to stop people's ambitions ahead of time. So people that might have said, hey, my next five year plan is to maybe get out of China. 
Uh, I still love my country and everything, but I think it's probably we're headed down a darker path or mm -hmm. it's not going to be good for a place to raise my kids or it's not going to be a good place to keep my savings. Yeah. They're trying to stop that now. Yeah. Because the, the brain, like you said, the brain drain, the, the outflux of capital. Yeah. It was a fire hose. Yeah, it's terrible. And unlike the fire hydrants in China, they yeah. actually worked. Yeah, if exactly. The money is funneling everywhere yeah, exactly. outside of China. Yeah. Good, good, so, uh, good analogy. Yeah. All right. Now... We're going to move on to a little bit of a controversy over here. Would you call it a con I would, yeah. A controversy. Well, at least domestically in China. So the, these are the Foxconn dormitories, okay? Remember we told you about Foxconn and Zhengzhou and Foxconn, the people supposedly died, and so everybody's like fleeing from there, right? Yeah. So video... I just said Jim Joe. Like, uh, no, I didn't you say You know, Jim. like Jim Joe over there. <laughs> Jung, 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 <laughs> Jung, 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 no, 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 Jung, no, you're Jung, right. Yeah. Anyway, um, footage is comes out of uh, people's belongings being thrown out of the dormitories here, okay? And you can see in the background just uh, piles and piles of people's personal belongings. So all their, their blankets and suitcases and whatever else has been in their dormitories just being thrown out. And I think this is part of the zero COVID crap, you know? They, it is. They quarantine the building and then they just go in there, they disinfect everything. But during the process, they just throw everyone's stuff away. Mm -hmm. So... These videos are going out there and people are getting really like angry about this. And then um, what does the government say? Well, so maybe you can play the video in the back. Yeah, well. So mm -hmm. there's two parts to this and I actually yeah. should have included something. The Chinese government staged a makeshift protest in New York City. Oh, did they against did? Against Apple. Okay. Right, which is crazy because mm -hmm. Apple just capitulated, by the way. Yeah. To say... Look at how bad Foxconn's management management is. Our zero COVID policy is fine. Foxconn screwed this up. That's why everyone's fleeing. They don't treat their workers well. It's the okay. stupid Taiwanese company hmm. slash Amer with American, you know, with American Apple, company. Yeah. That's making Chinese people suffer. And they had these people protesting. And it was so weird because you can see right through it. Hmm. They know that everyone's talking about this Foxconn fleeing thing. It's this horrible image of tens of thousands of people on that the road can't go anywhere, yeah, yeah. facing Dabai's armies with weapons. So we showed you last week, yeah. yeah. Mm. So that's the first part. The second part is this: these videos were going around yeah. of all these people's belongings getting thrown out, like you just explained. Yeah. But the controversy on the Chinese internet was the government was trying to tell these people, yeah, these videos are real, and guess what? It's not. It's not the government that's doing it. It's Foxconn. Foxconn is going in and just getting rid of all the employee stuff. Look at how bad this company is. And it coincided perfectly with yeah. the fake protests in New York City. All right. You can always see China's influence campaigns. Look at that shit piled up. Yeah, Sorry. no. Excuse my, my language. No worries. But mm -hmm. the, uh, the influence campaign yeah. of the Chinese government is even abroad. I mean, yeah. they're trying to push a narrative in New York City. And at the same time, they're, they're allowing these videos to go around, but going around saying, hey, yeah, you might see these rumors about these like people's all thousands of people's shit getting thrown out the window and sure. torched and thrown out. Mm -hmm. But that's not us. That's stu <laughs> those stupid bad Foxconn bad Foxconn managers mm -hmm. that treat their workers like slaves, mm -hmm. right? And it's um it's crazy. It's yeah. absolutely crazy because it's the exact opposite. It turns out it was the government. It was the threw, government. It's the government that went in and took everyone's stuff. The Dabai, yeah. the, the the you know sanitation workers. What do you even call them? I don't even know. You know, Paramed those like paramedic workers, no, pandemic workers, pandemic workers, I guess the stormtroopers. It turns yeah. out it was them, not Foxconn who went in and threw everyone's crap out. No, this is very shit ADP. So I yeah. apologize, but yeah, that's how all footage coming out of China is like this. It's always shit ADP. Anyway. Yeah. So the huge controversy was that people are mad. They're like, how dare you lie to us? Yeah. This is clearly the Dabai from the government that are getting rid of mm -hmm. thousands of people's belongings. Yeah. These poor people that are already poor to begin with. Sure. By the way, these workers are not paid very much. Yeah. Um, that are losing everything in their dorms. Yeah. It's terrible. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it wasn't that long. I don't know. You guys can probably remember this and I don't want to remind some of you that might get upset about this, but it wasn't that long ago that these uh, pandemic workers from the government were going in and just murdering everyone's pets. Yeah, I, mean, I feel beating like, them to death. I feel like because of apps like TikTok and like, I might sound like a boomer for saying this, but like apps like TikTok and all these like uh, very short media kind of yeah. things are YouTube ruining shorts. people's attention. <laughs> yeah, YouTube shorts. You're ruining mm -hmm. people's attention spans. Mm. Just remember, like, because you might have forgotten, not, not you directly, but a lot of people sure. have forgotten now that the Chinese government mandated that medical workers go in and murder everyone's pets. 
Yes. Just just remember that. They're little lap dogs and yeah. cats and stuff. Like, like that's that happened last year. Beat them to death with poles. Yeah. So this is not shocking to me. No. Right? So they this throw is... out everyone's stuff yeah. because it's like, oh, you know, quarantine for COVID and yeah. stuff. It's ridiculous, guys. I mean, why? Why would you put up with this? You know? know? How can you put up with this? You're a poor migrant worker. You work in a Foxconn, you get locked down, you get thrown in a quarantine camp, and then someone goes into your dorm and then destroys all your personal belongings. Yeah. Throws them out the window. Yeah. Doesn't even care, just throws them out the window. Your blankets, your books, your suitcase, your presumably they steal anything worthwhile. I mean, what like you know what I mean? It's whatever it is, it's just terrible. It's terrible that this is happening to people on such a large scale in China. Anyway, um, Let's talk about first tier cities for a second here. Sure. Now, a first tier city in China, I forget what denotes it as a first tier city. Has it got a certain amount of like GDP or whatever, you know? But it's, it's, a, it's a lot of factors. Basically, it's the best cities. Yeah. Um, if you were to classify first tier cities in America, I guess it would be like New York City and sure. maybe LA. Yeah. LA is kind of dodgy, though. You know? New York City's pretty dodgy. Actually, it's pretty dodgy. About? Yeah. Every city can be dodgy. True, true. It definitely LA is definitely a first tier city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't think so if you drove around some of those neighborhoods. Depends on where you are. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's same, like saying in, same in China. Yeah. yeah same like China. you could be in Shenzhen's a first tier city. Oh, yeah. You just you go to like one of those, yeah, Shaojing or something. Shaojing. Yeah. Definitely not. True. That's true. dodgy as hell. Anyway, yeah. so first tier city is basically the best cities in the country, right? Yeah. So in Shenzhen, you got four of them. Yeah, you got um, Shenzhen, where I used to live. You've got Shanghai, everybody knows. You've got Beijing, and then you've got Guangzhou. Those yeah. are the four. Everyone knows Shanghai and Beijing, so we usually use those as an example. Shenzhen yeah. and Guangzhou, I feel like the vast majority of people don't know. Yeah, it's weird because Shenzhen is the only other city with a stock exchange in it. Yeah, because Shanghai just, and Shenzhen. It's like people just don't yeah. care. It's let's weird. Be yeah. No, yeah. I, I guess so. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. hopefully, I put Shenzhen on the map a little bit. Anyway, yeah, for sure. So. You know, we got these four big first tier cities. So this is like the best China gets. You got some other really good cities like Chongqing, I suppose, or, you yeah. know, like when it oh, comes yeah. to infrastructure and stuff. But I'm just saying like, these are the best, Yeah, these four cities. And when stuff goes bad in those four, any of those four cities, then you know it's so much worse in the smaller places. Yeah. Because there's never a spotlight. If something happens in a tier 88 city somewhere, nobody will hear about it. No. There are certain cities and areas in China that have been in lockdown since like August last year, which we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get, get onto. There are places that have been in perpetual lockdown that are un, like suffering ter like terribly in China, but you've never heard about it because it's not important. Yeah. All right. So anyway, what you're seeing behind us here are people lining up for their tests in Guangzhou. No, this is in Beijing. This is in Beijing? Mm -hmm. Really? It's mm -hmm. not Guangzhou? Nope. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. I thought this was out of Guangzhou. Nope. It's in Beijing? Beijing. Okay, well, then uh, I stand corrected. This is Beijing. You sure it's not Guangzhou? 100%? Mm -hmm. Man, I thought this was Guangzhou. Anyway, it's similar stuff's happening in Guangzhou anyway. Oh, we'll but get this, to that in a yeah, second. In I a think second. you're confused because the next clips are in Guangzhou. Okay, anyway, yeah. so this is Beijing. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea of the scale of crap that people have to put up with every day, because this is a kind of a daily occurrence here mm -hmm. to get these kind of tests it's awful. And in some cases, you have to get tests multiple times a day. And you got to stand in these queues of thousands and yeah. thousands of people. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. I and even you... had to cut that photo off because yeah, of the it's shoe big. cam. And uh, guys, <laughs> you're going to actually find out later in this episode why the government insists on keeping this testing going. There's actually a reason. Mm -hmm. We found out there's a reason for this. Yeah. And it's not people's health. <laughs> All right, so... When it hits the first tier cities like this is when it's really bad. Now, this, this is, Guangzhou. is Guangzhou, right? People are posting things around. It's not good. What should I do? Revolt. Locked down by metal plates. It's not, you know, like mm. all stores closed except for meds or food. Um, things are getting crazy in Guangzhou. This first tier city for the first time is starting to see proper lockdowns. I think I... I, from that message, just I think it was important to put put that in there because it shows that people are so out of touch with other people in China. Yeah, like <clears throat> the huge swaths of the country have been going through this stuff 
And Guangzhou is not even is their current lockdown is not even as close to as bad as some of the other yeah, ones. Like even yet, Shanghai. Was... Yeah, people talk about it like it's some new thing. And by the way, Guangzhou people are much more rebellious. Yes. So they're like Cantonese people are much more rebellious than the average like northerner. Yeah. Or e- even Eastern Chinese person. Um. So they're throwing a fit. Yeah. But the other parts of China have been going through this forever. Yeah. Like. And it's like so people are so not sympathetic to their peers in China. Mm-hmm. It's a very not unified country, if that yeah, makes sense. It's not unified at all. And yeah. that's the problem. People live in a bubble. And that's why you can get, for instance, um, that, you know, you get these shills and the, these expats that live in China. Yeah. There's a small handful of them that uh, do work for the Chinese government. Yeah. And they always go out there and say how great China is, how amazing China is, how great and fantastic our life is in, here in China. When just next door, people have been in lockdown for months or are suffering greatly. But because it hasn't affected their little bubble, yeah, they can still go out and drink their cheap beer or whatever it is they do. Yeah, They don't care. They've got yeah. no compassion. They, they cannot even fathom yeah. that there's somebody actually struggling next door or a town over or a city over. For, sure. for them, that doesn't matter because it doesn't affect them. Everything's very right. insular in China. Yeah. And the way that the news is controlled, it maintains that 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 system yeah. where you don't care about what's happening in the city over from you. And that's why you see people getting shocked when their city gets locked down. We showed you this footage last week. Just wanted to show it to you again. This is Guangzhou, and these are kids being taken off to a quarantine camp. All right, because this started last week. Just wanted to show you that clip again because it's relevant. The city is currently going down some through some pretty incredible uh, lockdown stuff. Let me turn up the volume for this. So you can actually hear it. Give me a second. This is what happens when you tell Cantonese people I'm going to jail. Yeah, yeah. They don't accept it that easily. They're also a hell of a lot less nationalistic. Yeah. Yeah, this is the Yeah. for the Grand Prix. Yeah, you see these these barriers, is, is they, they set them up temporarily to like lock people into their compounds and yeah. to prevent people from accessing stores or whatever. Yeah. So somebody just made like a fun little thing. But now in Guangzhou, they're starting to see the metal barriers go up. Yeah. These kind of barriers yeah. go up. They're starting to see everything being shut down yeah. for the first time. And it's waking a lot of people up that previously weren't taking it seriously. You know? Yeah. It just sucks that it has to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, now we want to tell you something important. It feels like we're actually driving. Yeah, it's how you drive. Yeah, how you you drive, drive, drive backwards. It's in reverse. <laughs> yes. Anyway. <laughs> nucleic acid testing now accounts for 1.3% of China's GDP. Can we, can we, by the way, always we have to say, it means COVID testing. Can we stop saying nucleic acid? Sure, COVID testing. Not you. Yeah, yeah. Can they stop? Yeah, yeah. That's the... Oh, no. (laughs) Guys, this is huge. COVID testing is now a huge part of China's economic engine. Guys, 1.3% might not sound like a lot. That's over a trillion, a Mm. trillion RMB. Yeah. A trillion. A trillion. Over like 1.7 trillion. Yeah, it's crazy, that's, isn't it? I, that's like a, a, a bunch of countries size yeah. GDP. Yeah, yeah. Or is just for testing. Just for testing. So you see, it's really weird how the Chinese government manages to, I don't know, like game the system <laughs> they in a way. They do. They're like with the Ponzi scheme of yeah. the, um, the uh, real estate. Yeah. And not to mention uh, Lian, Lianhua Qingwen. Yeah, Lianhua Qingwen yeah. capsules. But now they're turning this mandatory COVID testing into like a, an economic it's an thing. It's an industry now that makes money. Yeah. It's like you have to be tested. It's like, you know, like they're like, what are you, you know, what are you working? I'm in the tech industry. I'm in the sanitation industry. Yeah. I'm in the dairy industry. I'm in the COVID testing industry. I'm in the COVID testing industry. Yeah. Because there's no choice. No. Okay, local governments have to pay for these tests, which they then get through taxes or whatever else, mm. right? So the, the, you end up paying for it. I know that they've been talking about making people pay for their tests, you know, like 20 RMB or something each or some nonsense. Yeah. Remember, that was yeah. going to happen. They're implementing paying for your test. Yeah. yeah. So you either way, you're still paying for these 
ridiculous mandatory tests that happen every day or every two days or yep. every week or it still happens like you cannot escape this if yeah. you if you go into a train station you're getting tested if you go into a metro like a yeah. take a bus anything you're getting tested if you try to fly to an airport look everywhere you go of any importance you need to be tested yeah and you need to have a clean green code within the last 24 hours or something yep. before you're allowed to go anywhere or do anything so you have to be tested okay so this is an industry that's a captive monopoly, okay? Because you have to have it done. So they're making tons of money now. Yeah, it's this. like uh, it's a forced economy. It's a forced economy. Yeah, it's crazy, and uh, that makes sense why they're not like giving up because they've probably realized, hey, this is a good way to generate a lot of income. Oh yeah, I mean, like the whole way that China works is once you're in, if you're in a government protected industry. Yeah. or you have government connections, then you literally walk all over everyone. Yeah. That's why people love, uh, and that's why people work for the Chinese government, like even uh, people from different countries doing propaganda or whatever, because they want to be part of this, almost like a harem. The, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. want the prostitution. Mm. They want the, the free cognac. Yes. They want the the attention. They want the, the respect right? yeah, yeah. that all these CCP officials get. away with get. living a debaucherous life. Oh, you can just be an absolute scumbag, yeah. Yeah. right? A really villainous scumbag. And yeah. it, it attracts a certain type of person. Yeah, like little leprechauns. And, yeah, for sure. They're like, oh, I know. can finally stop being ridiculed my whole life and sure. I can go get the respect I deserve. Right? Sure. Because I get attracted by authoritarian countries like this. Mm. Anyway, my point in the grander scheme of this is that if you make it into one of these industries or, or find government protection in China, then you're yeah. golden. Right? Sure. So this is what we're seeing here. Yeah, exactly. Now, just again, going to say it one more time. 1.3% of China's GDP is now COVID testing. Yeah. Testing. Yeah. And like I said previously, imagine the amount of waste that is being produced. I can't even imagine. There goes the ocean. Just there goes you know the world. they're dumping that shit in the ocean. Yeah, of course they are. But it's like plastics. <laughs> Plastic <laughs> lids. lids. Seriously, though, you got those little test tubes for every test, okay? Yeah. You've got the plastic you have to tear off to get your little Q tip out. Yes. Just that. Never mind the Q tip and all the crap and all the waste that's put into making these products. It's definitely regarded as being wasteful. It's ridiculous. It yeah. is the most wasteful thing ever. There's mountains and mountains of waste going mountains on. Mountains of waste. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's all because it's a it's a crafty way for the Chinese government to make money once again in a in a bad situation. They're like, ah, oh, silver lining. <laughs> yes. Oh, my it. buddy Josh Ortiz mm -hmm. says. Zua, zua, oh, please zua. Zua. Okay. Swan. Now here, unfortunately, we let's, we have yeah, to yeah. Let's bring it back to dour moment. We're gonna have to bring it back to a dour moment. We're just gonna play the first little clip, and then we're not gonna play the rest. <laughs> All right, so we're, on, we're that's that's all you're gonna hear from. Yeah, this, yeah. But we'll we're not gonna show it. you any of the rest of it because it's it's a conversation uh, in one of these groups. Now, when you're in a building in China, okay. Yeah. And this this used to happen all the time when we were there too, is you will have like a, a WeChat group for your building. Yes. Okay, this is where people get together. They talk about like if they're annoyed with the management or whatever, or if they can somehow find a loophole to screw over something. Or, there's always something going on in those groups. Something unsavory, right? Always. Um, <laughs> but this Not is always. Yeah, always. Not always. Every time. <laughs> there's always something in there. There's always something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is it's become a necessity these days with the COVID yeah. lockdowns, okay? Yeah. It's the only way for people to, you know, survive through this madness is for the first time people are really getting to know their neighbors, by the way. Yeah. Even yeah. though it's only through chat. Yeah, by the way, in China, knowing your neighbors is not really a thing. No, no. I mean, you live in an apartment block and yeah. the person next to you barely even say hi. Yeah, but you can. It happens, but oftentimes no. Yeah, but it's not like you go borrow a cup of sugar no, or something like no. that. Um, you know what I mean? It's it's a different kind of a situation. Villages are different. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Little villages. Everybody knows everyone yeah. else, and they just walk into your house. Yeah. It used to happen in our bike opposite. shop. Yeah. People just come sit randomly walk couch. and sit on our couch. Yeah. Like, use our toilet and stuff. Just yeah. come in without asking. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> so th but there's whatever. something nice about it, that. I guess yeah. it's, it is nice. It's friendly. But... Um, these groups have been the, a lifeline for people. Yeah. Okay. Not only just because for mental health to be able to sure. share their experience, but when there were food shortages and the government was supposed to be delivering food, but they weren't in Shanghai, for instance. Yeah. 
people in these groups would be like, hey, I've got like some eggs and you, do you have some meat or whatever? I'll trade you this and I'll trade you that. I've got some salt, you know? People were figuring out ways to help each other out. Yeah. Okay, through these groups. And fortunately here in this particular group, this uh, woman's mother committed suicide, well, jumped out of a window because she couldn't take it anymore. And she couldn't get the gate open because of the COVID lockdowns. And so the whole point of this conversation is people trying to help trying their best to get the um, building management and the authorities to open the gate so she could go to her mom who was like dying on the pavement. Yeah. And eventually it was the through the help of the other people in the group that she managed to finally, unfortunately too late, get yeah. to, to try and help her mom. But yeah, like I said, too late. So it was unfortunate. This is actually very close to where I used to live. This is in Hohut in Inner Mongolia. Yeah. Yeah, so she, she didn't make it out in time. But no. that was because of zero COVID. It just shows you the zero COVID policy locking people away like this is just a disaster. The problem with this is that you don't see, like, there's so much of this going on, by the way. Yeah. Like, these these instances happen constantly right now because of zero yeah. COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you you know, if you shared this, mm. uh, you, you, you're in trouble. Yeah. You know, if you record, someone recorded this and shared it, and the fact that we're talking about it means someone got in trouble, right? And yeah. that's the problem is that, no one's incentivized. Actually, people are de-incentivized to even talk about it. Yeah. Because you, you will be trouble. breaking the law in China for making China look bad. That's a law, mm. right? It's called spreading rumors. Yeah. And picking quarrels. Picking and quarrels. Spreading that rumors. That means like, actually mm. just means like you're making China look bad. Yeah. When in fact, what you're doing is airing your grievances. Yeah. Right. Correct. Um, it's, it's disgusting that this kind of situation is happening. But first of all, from a mental health perspective... If you are trapped like an animal in your apartment and it keeps, it's relentless as well. It's been going on now for too long. Oh, yeah. It's just relentless. So people, they, they might have some hope. Okay, the things, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live by the rules. I'll stay in my apartment for two weeks, mm-hmm. let's just say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then things will be better because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm following the rules. I'm saying what they, they, they're telling me to do. I'm yeah. doing it, right? Yeah. And you do that for two weeks and yeah. then it gets extended yes. and then it's a month and then it's two months or whatever. And then you get let out and you're out for about a week and you're kind of normalizing again and then you get locked down again. You know, it really grates on you. And even if you have a high capacity, like I find most Chinese people are able to suffer, chiku as they say. Mm-hmm. It's actually in, in China, Chinese people will tell you this. That's something they're really good at is chiku, mm. which means to eat bitter means to to endure. put up with and endure is the right word to endure hard times yeah. chinese people are very good at this because it's mm. been something they've had to do for countless generations yeah. whether it's been through emperors or yeah. horrible communist or dictators yeah. or whatever the case starvation and and hardships they're very good at enduring this stuff but even if you're very good at enduring this stuff you mentally start to take strain mm. and this is what happens like her mother wouldn't have jumped out the window if it wasn't for these lockdowns. And then no. the fact that nobody could get to her in time to save her is also a result of the lockdowns. Correct. It's all just a bad situation it's all really around. bad. It's, it's coming apart at the seams. And that's also why the rich people are trying to flee. Yeah. But they're trapped. Yeah. Because, you know, we're telling you about the fact that getting a passport... By the way, applying for a passport right now in China is very difficult. Mm. Okay? Very difficult to get one. There's all sorts of anecdotes we can tell you about people reaching out to us that hey they've tried they're they're significant others tried and they they're failing but if you're a rich person and you, ha- and you have a passport and you get stuck in a lockdown you can't leave either doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or whatever if you are suddenly caught up in a lockdown that's it there's nothing you can do no you wouldn't be able to go to an airport nope. you're just like taking a stroll through the park let's say because for whatever reason you're allowed out and everything's cool in in your city you stroll through a park and your QR code turns yellow because there was someone else in the park who went past someone else in another area where there was a yellow code. You can't get on a plane. You can't fly to no. Canada. Nope. You can't fly to your mansion in Canada. No. You know, you can't fly to Australia to for your milk powder empire or whatever that you've got going <laughs> over there. You can't because you got a yellow QR code, dude. Yeah. Like you're screwed. <laughs> it's the greatest control mechanism that the world has ever come up with. Yeah. So, I mean... It doesn't matter, you know, in the past, if you're rich in China, you get away with anything. Now you can't. Mm. Like, you, you could. Like, you could just do whatever. Yeah. Now you got a yellow QR code, you're screwed. Mm. You know? Whether for the right or wrong reasons. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, you could be a good person, a bad person, or yeah. someone in between. Good. 
but you're trapped now. Yeah. You know, there's so many mechanisms to trap you in China at the moment and and prevent your freedom of movement, not only within the city you live in, but the province you live in. Yeah. And of course, internationally, you're screwed. That's all by design. Yeah. And that's why so many people are trying to leave because it's so dangerous. Yeah. It's so unpredictable. You never know when you're going to be locked down next. No. You don't know how long the lockdown is going to go for. You have no idea. It's too unstable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The only stable thing in China is that it's unstable right now. Yeah. So. Sure. What do we got going on here? This is uh, this is something that's been going around. So there are hundreds of these uh, makeshift quarantine facilities. You know, that's these, just look at that. It's as far as the eye can see. It's on the highway on the, in uh, Hunan, right? <laughs> yeah, they built them. Did they build it? They built it on the highway. Yeah, uh, yeah they parallel to one lane that they kept yeah. open. Yeah, and this is just wild. Look mm. at the capacity for this. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you. For those of you who can't see this, um, who are listening, um, these prefabricated um, quarantine facilities, you know, it kind of looks like a shipping container yeah. almost. Or yeah. like, you know, and on a construction site, they'll put up a little prefabricated office or whatever where people sit and drink their coffee or whatever, you know, in there. And that type of thing, wear a hard hat. Not here, though, okay? These things stretch as far as the eye can see, all right? So there it goes, to the horizon. That's a lot. Tens of thousands of people capacity there, you know, easy. Yeah. Um, hundreds of thousands even. Yeah. You know? So why build so many unless you're planning to fill them up or perhaps they're already all full? Maybe they're going to be put on trucks and shipped <laughs> off. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, but it could be that or it could be that's where they're just going to put people. It's insanity. And this, like you see these little windows. Mm. Uh you can see them. That's where people hold their hands out, like Oliver, like, please, sir, I want some more. Yeah, yeah. You know, when they have to get their hood, zuo he suan, yeah, and then when they have, to, they, they have to get their rations, you know, their gruel. I mean, look at it. It goes in both directions, and yeah. it is on the highway. You can see there's the two lanes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just going to go back a little bit. So we have, uh, am I, okay, we have this crap, okay, going as far as the eye can see to the horizon, and then the camera pans to the left, and you think, oh, look, it's come to an end. But no, that's that's not an end, mate. That's an intersection. That's there it continues the on all the way you as far as I that. can see. You can't see the end of it. Like, that's a lot of quarantine facilities. By the way, though, China's yeah. the future. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great. This is this is, this is is it, <laughs> you know? Like, the the guys that have taken up the positions, and I hate to harp, harp on this so mm. much, but the guys that have taken on the positions of you know, pushing propaganda abroad. Like, yeah. I'm, oh, talking yeah. About, I'm talking about the white guys that work sure. for the Chinese government. The white monkeys. Yeah. I mean, how do you look in the mirror and yeah. like not see a clown makeup? Because yeah. this is, I mean, this is where we're at in China, guys. It pisses me off because you see this slick propaganda coming out of China all the time about look at our green technology initiatives yeah. or look at our infrastructure. But then the reality on the ground is this. Yeah. This horrible, dystopian, oppressive nonsense yeah. where they've got quarantine facilities as far as the eye can see yeah to entrap and ensnare and to imprison the populace yeah it's terrible yeah it's like indiscriminate like you and your child and your mother and your father or whatever you just happen to be in a building or an area where oh there was a case of covid you're going to end up in one of these places and probably separated as well Dustin Pearson said they're doing this to the Han people. Imagine the Uyghurs. Yeah. That's a great segue. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's a great segue, Dustin. Mm. Oh, you're absolutely right. Because when they do this to the Han people, the majority, you know that it's worse for the minorities because they always take less of a precedence. Speak of the devil. Mm. This is uh, a bunch of reports uh, on WeChat uh, slash Weibo about mm. areas of Xinjiang being locked down. Now, Xinjiang's Western China. That's where yep. the Uyghur minorities are, the genocide, you know, that whole, you may have heard whole, of it. whole thing you've heard about. Uh, Xinjiang's basically been in lockdown since August 13th. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking about August, September, October, November. We're on month four. Yeah. Four months Yeah, two, of almost to the day. And yeah. Yeah, so today's the 11th, right? Yeah. We are not... We are not hearing about that part. And that's because it's, like you said, it's not a tier one city. Mm -hmm. It's also a place that China wants you to forget about. Of course. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> and number two, it's uh, it's not important to Chinese people. 
yeah. right? Because it's the, it's those Uyghurs. It's yeah. just those minorities, mm-hmm. right? They don't they have to go through that. And again, like we said, it's a very ununified country. Yeah. Uh, nobody actually cares about different areas. In yeah. fact, a lot of areas are discriminated against. Yeah. So and Xinjiang. by everyone, I mean, like, Shanghai people won't care about Beijing people. Beijing Correct. people don't care right. about Shanghai. To Correct. use the two biggest examples. Yes. But that goes down to a, a tiny level Oh, as down well. to town. Yeah, like, this little town doesn't care about yeah. that town. I hate this town because yeah. they do this. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. it's not like sports rivalries. It's actual, like, discrimination. But yeah. the, um, yeah, Xinjiang. I mean, mm. we're looking at four months now. And you have to understand, I, I used Xinjiang as a great, as a great example, because there's whole areas of China that you're just not hearing about. And yeah. when I say lockdown, I'm not talking about, hey, you can't go to a restaurant. I'm talking about you can't leave your house. Yes. And it gets even worse. Go to the next slide. Okay, let's do it. This is in uh, Qinghai. Mm-hmm. In Qinghai province is next to Tibet. Uh, yeah. It's, it's actually mostly full of Tibetans. Um, well, I mean, a good chunk of it is. Uh, in Qinghai here, in Xining City, this is the capital of Qinghai, right? Mm-hmm. These people have been locked down in this wet market for over 40 days in a wet market. Not Whoa. in a district, in a wet market. And it's cold, by the way. No it's shit. It's free. It's Tibet. Yeah, yeah. Basically, Tibet. Every day, they need to go to line up, take a COVID test twice while authorities spray toxic chemicals at their bodies like they're bugs. And I saw footage. Yeah. These guys are walking around spraying the people in the wet market. They're spraying the people with yeah. the chemicals. You didn't put the footage in, did you? No, 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 Cause no. it's, yeah, it's, it's something to see if you yeah. haven't seen it. Yeah. We could show it next time. Yeah, for sure. Imagine being locked down in a wet market. Yeah. It's like those, those are like some of the worst places to be in China. Oh, yeah. Market. It's the it's smells like, yeah, and the dead flesh. There's just, it's awful. To be fair, there's probably not a whole lot of sales going on down there. Sure. But it's now. called a wet market for a reason. The floors are all like full of water and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of gross. Must be a terrible place to be locked down. Mm. Yeah. For 40 days. Yeah. You know, that's just ridiculous. Mm. Let's move on, shall we? Poor guys. I feel a lot of compassion for them. I do. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's just horrific, right? Anyway, uh, guys, before we continue, we do want to give you a... Let's cheer everything up here a bit. We can, let's have a word from one of our sponsors. What yes. do you reckon, okay? It's uh, an entire today, hornet. That this, uh, That's huge. <laughs> you really don't want to eat this. It's a supplement. <laughs> um, it's actually really good. <laughs> Burst yeah, like a pustule. A of <laughs> like you're popping a zit <laughs> in the mirror. You can pop it in, uh, in some water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. We were talking over that with our buzzing oh, yeah, bees yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, There's lots of bees. Athletic Greens, guys. You know, I don't know about you, but I'm not one of these guys who likes to pop pills. No, you're definitely not a pill popper. No, I sure. don't like pills. And no. I always see people that got their, oh, I got my, my Centrum A to Zinc Yeah, here's whatever. my magnesium. Here's yeah. my vitamin Hi, C. I don't need a, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. You know, let's create. I don't let's, need a <laughs> Yeah, let's have a plate of vegetables Shanta. the size of the moon, okay? Yeah. But you know what I'm yeah. saying? People take a lot of weird vitamins and, yes. and whatever to keep up with stuff. And I'm not into that, right? No. It's too much. No. It's too much to take in. Um, and i got a friend who's massively into martial arts yeah. and wushu and stuff. And actually, before we even got this uh, sponsorship from Athletic Greens, he was telling me about Athletic yeah. Greens. Yeah, people love it. Yeah. You know, they were going ape. So we were talking about it uh, when we ended up trying it. It actually worked out because you don't have to take a big pile of vitamins. I'm one of those guys mm. that takes a big pile of vitamins. Yeah, you and do. I don't have to do that with Athletic Greens. So what's in it anyway? Well, with every scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. So you take this in the morning, you drink it with a cup of water, super, super easy. This special blend of health ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, focus, and aging. All of the things. And it's super lifestyle friendly. So you know how there's like tons of people, especially here in America, mm-hmm. you got people that are in all different uh, different diets and stuff or restrictions too. Sure. You got gluten-free people, you got keto people, paleo people, vegan people, dairy-free people. Yeah. The AG1 from Athletic Greens completely uh, adheres to all of these things. You're okay. not going to break any of those it's rules. pretty universal then. Totally universal. Has less than one gram of sugar and it's all high ingredient or high quality ingredients for your body. There's no GMOs, no nasty chemicals. There's nothing artificial in this. You're investing in all-in-one uh, nutritional insurance. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you 
one free year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's like adventure. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash ADV to take ownership over your health and pick up your ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Excellent. So probiotics, are they like counter antibiotics? They, they help. Uh, the antibiotics good, goes good. in and like burns the town down. And, yeah. You know. So probiotics are like in yogurt and stuff. They're the good bacteria that your gut needs to like help right. your immune system. So they come in there and they're like kick, kick, kick ant- antibi- out, you know, antibiotics out. And they're just uh, like, they like repair the walls and, and paint them. Yeah. To get rid of the sure, graffiti. Sure. You know, put if the new wanna, glass in the windows. If you want to turn this into a weird like Disney <laughs> movie or whatever. <laughs> just, I always wondered yeah. about that, you know. Yeah. Gut health. Gut health, dude. <laughs> feel it in my gut. You I know? feel it. I got a good gut. I got a good gut. Yeah, gut feeling. Yeah. Is that when your gut health's all good? Anyway. It is. Um, good. So, oh, well, <laughs> that's out of the way. Let's move mm-hmm. on to Wilmar Corner, guys. Wilmar Corner is where we talk about the haters. And man, do we have a good one for you today? Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Australia for a you, second. You always do. And Australia, believe it or not, is more than just milk powder and Empires. sheep. Empires. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, it's actually a fantastic country. It is. Um, I got family there. Nice place. Sounds you know? like you're about to do a product plug for Australia. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> One of the worst accents. I just got to get that out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that, is that what you're leading just, up to? Yeah. You know, you, you, before, you, before you drop a bomb like that, you know, you have to build it up. You have to build bit. it anyway, up. No, I, I actually, I would never say that, but. You know, it's true. You have the guts. You, you have know, the gut help you know, to say true. that. You know, it's true. Yeah. Australians know it's true, too. <laughs> you know, it's like, what it's, can you do? It's got to be one do? of the worst accents it's in the world. It's pretty bad. Yeah. As far as English accents um, yeah. are concerned. That's right. It's got we its love, charms. We, but we love all Australians, and we love even hearing the accent. I still love to hear it. It's just sure. one of the worst. It's one of the worst English accents. Just to have to say that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we love you, though. We um, love you a lot. And, and equally. Just because yes. you got a worse accent doesn't mean... Oh, yeah. Mean you're still we, just as much just of a as human. Equal. Yeah, in fact, you're better than us. Because you, yeah, you wouldn't say that. You're great. You'd be like, nah, your accent's okay. You know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, the fact that you wouldn't say that about us means that you're better. You win. And you'd be wrong anyway. So, um, <laughs> so sorry about that. Now, in, in Australia, um, we actually have some uh, excellent activists, okay? Yeah. Uh, activists that are uh, helping fight against the CCP. You've yeah. got activist artists like Badio Tao. Yes. is in Australia. You've got... Um, Think tanks like ASPE, mm-hmm. who do a lot of good work in exposing the, the overreach of the CCP. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, you also have a lot of influence, CCP influence in Australia. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, a woman, her name is Vicky Shu. We've talked about her before. Love Vicky. She yeah. does great stuff. She does great stuff. She did a lot of um, investigative journalism into the whole Xinjiang situation. Yeah. And because of that, she's become enemy number one, almost, of... The Chinese yeah, Wu Mao. It's horrible. Okay. So here's the thing. If you are critical of the CCP in any way, shape, or form, um, like us, yeah. And we're not saying criti- critical of China or anything. Nope. It's just critical of the CCP. If you like, listen, the Chinese well, that's government. That's all they care about. The Chinese government's making some mistakes. They're doing something wrong, et cetera, et cetera. This is a bad thing they've done. Then all of a sudden, the government sicks its dogs on you, okay? You know what the. the- hilariously bad uh, uh, hypo- hypocritical situation is here. Yeah. If you are like this disgusting, racist piece of shit, mm. and you said the most vile things about Chinese society and culture and people, the Chinese government wouldn't give a shit about you. Yeah, They only care if you criticize the government. Well, I mean, look, here's the thing. If you look at some of the people that they are using as their spokespeople, yeah, yeah, the, the, white, the white guys that they yeah. get on like Chinese state TV, yeah. we've got drug felons yep. we've got pedophiles yep. we've got like literally like convicted yeah. we yeah. can show you the proof yeah. but they bring them on chinese state tv and they're like that's fine this foreigner says that china's great and yeah. then they the highlight them. government's great yes yeah. exactly yeah. um anyway what i'm trying to say here is the usual tactic they do is rather than try to attack somebody's argument so mm-hmm. for instance vicky did some very good investigative journalism yeah about the the plight of the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, yeah. okay? And yeah. she filed a report, and she's part of this Aspie think tank. Instead of saying, like, hey, she got these facts wrong, or we don't agree with that, they well, attack... She didn't, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah. she was yeah. correct. They attack her character, and 
um, because of the Chinese, China is a very misogynist country. Very. Incredibly. The easiest thing for them to attack uh, women, the easiest way for them to attack women is to slut shame them. Yeah. Basically call them sluts and all sorts of things. So she actually has been brave enough to confront this and she actually read some of the things that people have been saying about her online. And this was uh, uh, targeted at Elon Musk as well. Yeah. Because Elon's all about his free speech bullshit mm-hmm. he keeps talking about. Sure. Meanwhile, Chinese government officials are allowed to run rampant and abuse and harass people. And agents of the Chinese yes. government that actual harasses the yeah. Wumao army are allowed to use Twitter as a tool to attack people. Chinese women yes. abroad. Yes. Let's take a look. She read some of these out. Oh, hang on. I have to turn the volume up so that people can hear this. Give me a second. Let me take that back. Whoops, we'll get to that other stuff soon. Just listen to what she has to say. After taking drugs, Vicky Xu had group sex with no less than 15 white men. Most of them were Vicky Xu's bosses. And Vicky Xu, which is me, relied on this method to advance her career. What right do you have as a prostitute to talk nonsense here? On behalf of many of my Xinjiang friends and most of the Australian people, I call on Vicky Xu to stop selling your body and soul. Please stop selling. What you write is not written by yourself. It's basically ice cream. It's just a barrier for the real black hands behind. If you're stabbed tomorrow, the same article will be published by another name. Are you busy going to your drug party? Why didn't you get hit by a car? Can your brain figure out these things all day long in bed? Do you as a person who sells your body and soul still have emotions? Come on, come for some happiness on my crotch. Fuck you, you old female dog. A bootlicker that relies on rummaging through Chinese garbage dumps for news abroad. Do you think they will think you're cheap when you kneel and lick your foreign father? Like many Chinese journalists and researchers, especially female ones, I have been targeted and trolled and intimidated by the Chinese government, both online and offline. Um, In the last couple of weeks, these efforts have really escalated, and my colleagues at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute investigated many of these abusive tweets, and then they mostly have been posted between Beijing business time uh, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And um, these Twitter bots, these Twitter accounts have been taking breaks between 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Beijing time on their lunch break. Yeah, so I think that's kind of important to to point out, okay? Um, the fact that she's been facing this horrendous abuse. You read some of the things that um, oh, it's so that, that they're saying about her. And it's relentless, <sighs> by the way. You get yeah. thousands of these um, um, messages and attacks every yeah. day. And even state media is releasing these like gross cartoons about her and stuff, right? Yeah, I mean those cartoons were not like uh, haters on Twitter. No, these, it's this like was Chinese, Chinese state, state media, media yeah. making her uh, into a, a whore. Yeah, and making her like look like she's being uh, abused or uh, participating in sexual acts with like politicians and stuff. Stuff like that. Yeah, it's horrid. So it's it's the typical immature bullshit that we have to put up with as well. Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. We get obviously. Because we're men, we don't get the slut shaming part of things. But yeah, they call they, us we don't like, get the misogyny part. Yeah, but we they get do, all they, they the go rest. After our wives, yeah, though. they do. They call our wives all <laughs> this stuff. You know, yeah. like um, my my wife had to shut down all her social media. Yeah, because she was getting this kind of thing. Like yeah. she had an Instagram and stuff before. Yeah, uh, and a Weibo and things all had to be shut down because it was just this you you race traitor dog. You know this and that. The next you thing it's just disgusting. Toilet. Western yeah, yeah. Toilet. Western toilet. Yeah. All this. I can't even say it because yeah. we'll, we'll get kicked the, off this, YouTube The disgusting here. things that were sent to our wives is what Vicky Shu is really yes. experiencing on mass here. But the interesting thing about it all is the time um, that she's the majority of these tweets were being made at her. Yeah. Beijing Standard Time, which, by the way, is the whole country. Yes. It's ridiculous in There's China. There's no, like, 
it's 8 a.m. in Beijing and the sun's rising. China's Meanwhile, the it's same like, size as the U.S. Yeah. And one so time it's zone. basically in Xinjiang or whatever. It's like midnight, yeah. but that's 8 a.m. Yeah, like and, Alaska yeah. is the same time zone as New York. Yeah. <laughs> it's how it works. It's, it's ridiculous. So <laughs> the whole of China operates yeah. off one time zone. So between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. is when the majority of these attacks happen. And the two-hour siesta, which, by the way, in China, if you're not a, aware of this, but people sleep during their lunch break yeah. in the office, on their desks. Mm-hmm. It kind of shocked me when I first sometimes got to China. Sometimes people go home. Yeah, sometimes they go home because it's two hours, right? Yeah. So if they live close by, they just go home to take a nap and then they come back. Sure. Wolf something down for like 10 minutes and sleep and yeah. they come back. Yeah. Um, often sleep on the floor in the office mm-hmm. or whatever. It's weird. Like if you've been to China, you will know it's, that's how it is. It's part of the culture there. Yeah, it's like a siesta. Work culture. So yeah. it's interesting to see that it's only during work time that she's attacked. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the, during lunch break, she's not attacked either. Yeah. And this proves to you that it's not some volunteer shit, okay? Because if it's a, like, let's just say it's a, a troll, okay? Mm. It's a nationalist troll. Surely he'd still be sending stuff after hours. Oh, yeah, pro- probably in the evenings. Probably even more, Yeah, right? Yeah. Because you You'd get an uptick in Yeah, you, you would see an uptick. Oh, I got off work. Let me go and tell that stupid uh, Vicky Shu what's what, you know? Yeah. yeah, But it's not that. It's only during office hours. So it's like, okay, morning clocking in. All right, how many people do I have to harass today? Yeah. I got Vicky Shu. I've got Serpent today. I've got Lao 86. Yeah. I've got China. Oh, we're all on the I've schedules. Got, we know it's that. It's like they've got a list. There's like a <laughs> one of those boards on the wall with yeah. like thread attaching everything <laughs> it together. It sounds like you're making a joke but there's not. it's true <laughs> that's it's how true. it is and then they go like okay i gotta go flag all of adv china's new yeah. videos as being inappropriate yeah. and pedophilia or whatever let me go do that yeah and then they're like what didn't right. work last time let's change it this uh this time they're selling drugs yeah yeah oh yeah oh drug content yes exactly yeah. oh i gotta create another five new fake like you know gmail accounts so that i can let's get a proton mail to go and yeah. say drew pavlou blew up the parliament or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what i mean so this is what they do this is their job yeah and they're sitting there and they're slurping their instant fun. noodles and they're just doing it blah yeah. blah 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 blah. they get to their lunch break ah oh, sleep time sleep for a bit you know yeah. you see the you see the lull in the graph there okay wake up ah oh, let's see mm, let's continue blah 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 it's ridiculous i like i like just a just a piece of advice for yeah the chinese government mm chill out on like the political cartoons that is portraying women like like slut shaming women yeah number two chill out on going after people that work for data-based think tanks because they can compile all this stuff and figure out where it's coming from yeah exactly (laughs) you know what i mean like don't go after such intelligent people that have like really well researched facilities behind them because yeah. they'll figure out where it's coming from, and then this is going to backfire. I mean, everyone that just watched this right mm-hmm. now and watched her on Twitter is going to come out of this probably permanently with a ch- changed opinion of the Chinese government. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, huge if, backfire. If you if you have the inclination, I would go and follow her on Twitter and show a Absolutely, little support. Yeah, for sure, show a little support because I know she's in a safe place and she's. Luckily, she's strong enough to deal with this kind of nonsense. But yeah. when you're under such relentless attack by a foreign government like this, it helps to know that there are people in your corner. For sure. That's what's gotten us through a lot of stuff is yeah. because we have Absolutely. an audience. You guys who watch us, you know, you we know you've got our back. Yeah. And we know that just because you watch our stuff, yeah. you know. So uh, if you were to go give her a like or a thank you or, a, you know, like we support you type message on her Twitter, I think it would help. Greatly. Absolutely. It would help greatly. Yeah, so. Vicky does great stuff. And her content's great, too. Yeah. So, so give her a follow. Yeah. So um, there are actually a couple of other things in Wumau Corner that we wanted to address before the Vicky Shoe incident. I just got into the whole Australia, um, you know, accent thing. So anyway, um, what's this all about? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, look at the person that replied. And yeah, oh, know. it's Chen Weihua. You know, because I'm the one that found this, so yeah. I want to see if you can figure this out without even me explaining. I think you can okay. easily figure this out. So, <clears throat> Ian Bremer said, who's Ian Bremer? I don't know. Sounds familiar, though. Who's that? Um, I don't know, actually. Anyway, he said, Taiwan's foreign minister vows to box against authoritarianism with gloves donated by uh, Kiev mayor. Okay, float like a butterfly, butterfly, sting like a Zelensky? Question mark. This guy's obviously commenting on the the Taiwan foreign minister's words, right? Yes. So Chen Weihua, which is one of the most tactless China state-affiliated media people out there, with his most famous quote being "the fucking Maas," when it was like the German <laughs> Chancellor Maas said something that he didn't like, so he just replied "the fucking Maas." Yes. Which, by the way, this is a Chinese um, diplomat. 
Yes. Why why do they get to be so undiplomatic and people just take them seriously? Well, Chen Weihua is actually um what's it called? Chinese state affiliated media. Yeah, he's, he's, state he's media. a wolf wanker. Yeah. That's my point. And he just literally just doesn't shut up. He says, ha ha, I can knock down this fatty joke with one finger. I mean, like so, you have Chinese official media mm, saying that. Yeah, that he can knock down this fatty joke with one finger. I doubt that, Chen Weihua. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I actually wouldn't, wouldn't. I think you'd get knocked out. Yeah. Because you're all talk. He's not an official, though. I mean, he's the China Daily. Yeah, but know, I mean, he's ch- he is he's a journalist. He's, he's, China, a, he's a state journalist from the Chinese. He's government. connected to the Chinese government. Yes. I'm going to call him a diplomat because he's basically the he's a yeah. talking point of the Chinese. Oh state. yeah, for sure, for sure. You're right. You know, and he has his official uh, China state affiliated media, and he's got a real blue check mark, not one of those fake ones that you buy for eight dollars. Then they shut that down. I think they did. <laughs> This Twitter Who shit. Who knows? Uh, honestly, honestly, if only Elon Musk would do the right thing and just shut Twitter down. Honestly, that would be one of the greatest things in our generation. Like yeah. one of the greatest altruistic events. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just shut it down. Just pull the plug and go. Yeah. You might have to deal with some backlash and some lawsuits and stuff, but deal with it. And you will go down in history as actually doing a good thing. Yeah. Thanks, For Elon. Once. Instead of, see what Biden said? Well, he's going to look into him or something. He says, uh, Elon Musk's foreign connection should be looked at. And dude, look at what he's doing with Saudi Arabia, China, and Russia. Yeah. Holy good. shit, this guy's unhinged. Yeah, anyway, we'll get on to yeah. that at some point. This isn't a, an Elon bashing episode. No, it but, should um, be, though. It should be, at this yeah. point, yeah. Um, okay, what else do we have in uh, Wumao Corner here? It's always uh, the fun part of the show. Explain what's going on here. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, this is just some some a funny thing that's going on. Do you see the wolf warrior on the right? Mm-hmm. Hua Chunying? Yep. So Hua Chunying is a very famous wolf warrior, and she was fielding questions in a, in a TV show. Right. One of the questions came from this Chinese girl, presumably a student. She said, uh, China's image internationally is not great. What, you know, what can we do about that? What do you think about that? Mm-hmm. And her response wasn't like, yeah, we must like do something to improve it. Her response was, who says basically it, to, to sum it up? If you watch the clip, is like who who says China's image is not great internationally? Only Ch- only Chinese people can be the judge of China's image. <laughs> <laughs> only Chinese people can be the judge yeah. of Chinese international image. Yes, yes. Hmm. That, that's let hmm. them let Chinese people decide what the what the image of China is. Not the inter, not international community. Well, the CCP is so used to just deciding everything. Yeah. Oh, we're just suddenly the best green power in the world. Yeah. Oh, we're actually better than everyone else at doing this. Yeah, oh, yeah, coal no, we're totally mining fine. Like, yeah, geez, like, come on. The coal <laughs> yeah, mining things are such nonsense. I thought it was funny. You can't even, to the slightest extent, admit, yes, maybe our international image is better. Bad. We can do something to improve it. No, yeah. That's what, like 10, 15 years ago, that's what would have been said. Yeah. Now it's, shut up, mm-hmm. you dumb girl. Only Chinese people can decide. Only Chinese people can decide what our international image is. It's just shut up. Yeah, exactly. Um, here's a... a kind of a, a an upsetting one i suppose in a way but the um chinese junior high school students life ambition it's like one of those things you get in school you mm. fill out what's your life ambition his life ambition is to get into a famous university and then go to the u.s to become a spy <laughs> do you have the actual uh, image can we pull it up and read the actual thing because it's it it's a bit too small to read it up there oh sorry yeah oh, crap my sorry the desktop and our work yeah, it's probably in, if you've still got the project open. Yeah, I'll pull up the project. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately. Yeah, just, just give me a second. Give us a second, because it's important to read it. You can probably read it at home if you can see it on your monitor. Yeah, you guys uh, will probably be able it's to read in it. It's in Wumar Corner. That's in Wumar Corner, so. Yeah, like at the beginning of Wumar Corner. Oh, okay, you went out of order. Yeah. Let's see. Well out of order today. It's not a big deal. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, so what is All it? All right, so it says... My dream is to be a spy and go abroad to steal, son of a gun, go abroad and steal uh, information. I need to have sufficient theoretical knowledge and language skills, get into a famous foreign university, turn into a driver for the U.S. senior official, and then take advantage of the opportunity to steal information. <laughs> Start you know, young. You know, China wouldn't have to steal information if they just started to do some innovation. Yeah, it's not really allowed, to be fair. Yeah. It's just kind of crappy. In a way. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, what's this about uh, Billy Billy? Oh, it's just this this little uh, comic. Mm -hmm. 
the it was there was this little cartoon yeah when they showed the world in the chinese version yeah of this ca- cartoon they actually just took out all the countries oh we're, we're to a point now where you can't even show other countries what's going it's on it's not even you know it you could say oh because they showed taiwan's not but a there's part not of even taiwan there. no because it shows america mexico i guess that's supposed to be South America, Australia, in the wrong spot. It's just yeah. a, it's a, just a random globe. Yeah, it's not, not realistic. They actually deleted the. They continents. deleted the continents off of the globe. Hmm. They're like, that's China's not in the center yeah, there, China, so just it, get rid it of it. It should only be China. Yeah. It's just like this is where we're at. It's kind of ridiculous. How how does China how does the Chinese government expect anyone to respect it? I, I don't know. I certainly don't respect them. You know. Anyway, yeah. Um, let's see what... Uh, I'm just getting past all this. Okay, yeah. so I guess it's almost time for us to hit our next segment, which is yes, Worldview. World but before we do, guys, we got to show you something. You know, we had such a great time on Monday. Oh, we did. You know what we did on Monday? Let's just show you what we did on Monday. Demon Pig is here to stay. Get down on your knees and pray. <laughs> go I, go I. Rural insanity and mm. weddings. Going to a wedding is one of the worst things to do. Rolling in the dirt right in the middle there. Yeah. Like a rural granny mosh. Mosh pit. It kind of is. <laughs> There's such a strange disconnected. It's weird. I thought that this was probably one of the worst looking outfits I'd ever seen. It's horrifying. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Yeah. This is one of the the worst looking in- <laughs> entertainment <laughs> it's, it's chaos yeah. it's just pure chaos yeah. so yeah yeah that was Xiao Ho, which is our monday show guys uh if you guys are new here you probably don't know this we have a monday show you know how we're having a show right now yeah we have another show every monday yes we do and it is on oh yeah patreon.com forward slash adv podcast if you join the Xiao Ho tier uh it's like a little vip private show yeah you know like Last week's one was about rural weddings. Yeah. It's the kind of stuff that's... It's like stuff that wouldn't make the news. Like, we're talking about news stuff here, right? And current events. We talk about personal experiences Mm. mixed with stuff that you... It's too, like, niche. Yeah, it's it's a bit abstract. It doesn't really fit into the the main China show. Yeah, like, we wouldn't have... The China show wouldn't be about rural weddings. But we have so much experience with this kind of stuff that we have our our Monday show about very specific things. So, yeah, rural weddings, which are in crazy... Crazy. Yeah, this this coming Monday we're gonna have a crazy one about rural drinking games. And, yeah, and rural like, drinking games, like and rural, rural fun and just absurdity and stuff that happens in rural China. So it's gonna be a fun one, specifically about women drinking. There's a big thing yes. about women showing off, doing drinking tricks and stuff. So it's gonna be quite yeah. quite an interesting one. Yeah, but anyway, one yeah. more plug. Uh, sure. Go to uh, go to uh, patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts, and uh, if you want to watch. And be a part of our sort of VIP club every Mondays. Head on over there. Join the Shaban Ho tier. Yeah. And, I mean, if you join we our patron, out. yeah, it's fun. If you join our patron, you also get other benefits too. Like, like a Discord. Yes. We have a Discord. It's a, it's growing. Uh, all patron tiers have access to Discord. By the way, mm-hmm. uh, Tyler B- uh, Bozanowski asked, how long is Shaban Ho? Shaban Ho is an a, hour. It's a full show. Yeah. It's like an hour to an hour and a half. Yeah, usually between um, an hour and an hour and a half. Yeah, so it's a full-on show. If you join, you also get to go watch all the previous ones. Yeah, yeah. It's not only live. You don't have to be there live. You can watch all of them. <clears throat> yeah. We've done like 20, 19 or 19, 20 so 19, far. 19, yeah. 20 of them. Very fun show. Yeah, we Check enjoy it. it. It's good fun. Anyway, hope to see you there. Um, and now it's time for us to move on to our uh, worldview segment, guys, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. So let's take a look. Hmm. What's this? I just find this so necessary to point out mm-hmm. that the world keeps allowing China to come. Let, let's admit, like climate change is probably one of the most dire issues we're going to face in our sure. generation, right? So when you have international dialogue and you have countries coming to the forefront and saying, hey, let's work something out together and to come up with global initiatives yes. or everyone kind of Which for some something. reason, China always gets exempted. Yeah, so... China Mm. ends up being the poster child for a lot of these initiatives. And they're like, look at how much China's advanced in this in this sector. Look at how much they've reduced coal output. Look look how much they've reduced carbon. But they haven't though. And every single time it's not true. No. Every single time, with any quantifiable measure, China is doing so much irreparable damage to the environment and is increasing coal usage, increasing carbon output, Mm -hmm. and thinks 
that it can go out there and give its own bullshit statistics so that other people say, okay, well, China is obviously the world leader in this industry, green yeah, technology industry. Sure. Let's follow them. Yet, yeah, by the same token, they won't pay into the climate fund for okay. developing mm -hmm. countries. This climate fund, meaning that you give money to developing countries that need to use more car carbon output to kind of catch yeah. up, to yeah. get up to the world standard, right? China won't contribute to that. No. Because it's only about China. China yeah. doesn't give an absolute shit about the environment. Xi Jinping is doing nothing for the environment. The yeah. statistics are bullshit. And if I have to cover this again, I'm going to get blue in the face. But we've covered this to... to to the end and people don't seem to understand no they don't understand they keep buying the bullshit that china is somehow green technology and doing better guys year on year china is increasing its coal burning power plants it's just put in an order for a ton of new coal burning power plants their co2 emissions increase year on year they put out more emissions than the entire developed world combined at the moment and it's climbing it's not coming it's not going down. down it's not coming down and it won't come down no. on top of all the other illegal fishing stripping the sea of all sea life and stuff that goes on china's doing irreparable damage to the planet but they have such a good smoke and mirror show by putting out this crap about green technology that's why they do it by the way not because they actually want green technology. It's to convince people to Correct. leave them alone yes. and not call them out on their bullshit. It's like it's like they're trapped. People, people sit in the air like this stupid hydrogen power tractor that we hear on the show debunked. It's for the majority of people who just quickly browse through the internet and they see something pop up and it's some very nice CG representation or like a shot of a solar farm. It's very gorgeous big data. Yeah, exactly. Or some... Bullshit fluff piece that says that China's advanced in yeah, this yeah. solar and renewable energy. And it makes people think, wow, China's so clean and green. Meanwhile, it's the worst, dirtiest, most polluting country in the world. And it's getting worse. But everyone's like, oh, they're so green and great. That's why they do these big green technology initiatives is to deflect away and to stop people scrutinizing what they're doing. Yes. Just bear that in mind, guys. Next time someone tries to pull this. I just this... hate harping on about this because yeah. I feel like we're a broken record, but it's so important to understand because the world is at stake. Yeah. Right? Like if you're gonna if you're one of the people that think this is the this is the the dire consequence of our time, yeah. all of these actions have led up to this and we need to do something about this, then why does the whole world sign on to this and China just gets a pass? Yeah, why why is there no scrutiny? Why aren't the Greta Thunbergs of the world? Right. It's calling you know, China out. Calling out China. It's always calling out some European country that's, that's already... actually reducing emissions. ...already reduced a shit ton and doing a lot and sacrificing a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway. Or Japan or whatever. Yeah. Drew Pavlou pulled a yeah. funny one here. He bought one of those fake blue marks. Yeah. Pretty sure he bought it, right? He didn't get one. I don't know. Did he buy it? I don't it, know. Maybe he actually got a blue mark. I don't know. I don't know. Either way... <laughs> He got a blue check mark, whether he paid Drew for Pavlou it or not. Drew is a political activist slash politician in Australia yes. who is against the Chinese government and his party is made up of Chinese diaspora slash uh, Tibetans and Uyghurs. Yes. And they, and Burmese, and mm -hmm. they are trying to stand up to Chinese influence in Australia. Yeah, and you know what, he's, just so you know. he's a bit of a firebrand and a provocateur yeah. and he's he's a good guy all around, yeah. you know. He's definitely a good guy. He's, he is, and um, <laughs> I liked what he did. He got this blue check mark, whether he paid for it or not, I'm not sure, but he said, uh, my first act as a blue check, I would like to thank Elon Musk and Tesla <laughs> for confirming their support for an independent Taiwan. <laughs> and that's great. It's parody. Yeah. It's clearly parody. It's, it's a great message that we can get behind. And then he said the same message. Thank you, at Elon Musk. And then his Twitter account got locked. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, yeah. Elon Musk going out there, not to harp on Elon yeah. again, but to go out there and say comedy is back on Twitter and just keep banning people left and right yeah. that do anything a parody. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Even people I don't even support, like people that are like way out there politically, are we're doing parody stuff that I I have to get behind because it's freedom of speech, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, they're getting bad, mm. and it's just a shit show. It what is, a joke! It is a joke. I think Twitter. It, going in this trajectory will end up in the hands of basic Chinese officials, basically. Seems they'll, they'll be able to run rampant. I mean, this is kind of him just testing the waters. And sure. from what it looks like, um, yeah, maybe you, it's going to get to a point where you just can't can't say Taiwan's a country. Yeah. You know? We know where Elon stands on, on China, so. 
yeah, on on the mainland soil with his <laughs> yeah. gigafactories and yeah. whatever else, funded yeah. by the Chinese government. Yes, and I think it's something like thirty percent of his um, profit or more comes from China. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So he he has all of his like fingers in one pie, basically. You know what sucks is that you know just like just like you said, U.S. doesn't have a WeChat. Why don't we have a government controlled all powerful app that can see and track everything we do? Yeah. What a knows. shame, Elon. Yeah. Anyway. Um glad I never bought a Tesla. Daily yeah. bay. What is daily bay? <laughs> we got we got you. Yeah. We got another of these pieces of shit. Yeah, that's uh, a daily so bay. Shit. These stupid dumbass piece of shit uh uh state media companies. Yes, yes. Go and they manufacture these huge accounts. Yes. Uh, and we caught one in its infancy. Sure. Uh, usually we find them after they've gotten millions and millions of followers. Yeah. So Chinese state media, what they'll do is they'll go on the platforms they ban, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, mm-hmm. right? They don't allow their citizens to see these. And then they use those platforms to talk to Westerners, mm. right? to talk to Western audiences, right? Now, okay, one thing I'd like to point out, how many followers does this have? This is uh, about a half a million. Yeah, 504,000 something. Yeah. How many reviews? Well, it's got five stars. Yes. How many reviews does it have? Uh, two. <laughs> this is what I was pointing out. Yeah. So you get these accounts, mm-hmm. and they're state media. Yeah. Number one, they ne- rarely get state media labels. Yeah. So nobody knows mm-hmm. this is state media. They just think it's some very popular account. Yes. Right, like uh, <clears throat> about news or something. And this one in particular literally says it's Guangdong TV, which is yeah. central government. Sure. It's provincial government, which is central government. Yeah. State media. So it's a propaganda account. Yeah. With half a million followers and two people have reviewed it. Yeah. Two people out of half a million. Yes. I'd say that's a low amount. Let's look at some of the media that they put out. And Facebook, maybe you can start freaking paying attention mm. to these accounts that make millions of followers that are completely fake. Yes. Right. For propaganda purposes. This was put out, uh, it said, seven hours ago. Okay, Okay, Friday, uh, what? On Friday, China released 20 new COVID-19 prevention control measures. Bloody, bloody bullshit, okay? So with half a million followers, how many uh, likes did this get? You got one like. One. One. One like. One like. Out of half a million million. followers. Because you know, if you're a follower of a Facebook group or whatever this is called, Facebook page, you get notified. Yes. When there's something, it comes up on your feed. Facebook slash Meta, there are Chinese government accounts mm-hmm. that are literally getting half a million to millions, millions. Mm. Yeah. Some of these, remember Li Jingjing and stuff, yeah. millions yeah. of followers, yeah. millions yeah. of Ms. followers and all that. Yeah. with n- almost no interaction. Please it shows you it's fake. It's, it shows you it's just bullshit. Yes. yes. Okay, because it's impossible. If this got shot out to 500,000 people. Yes. Within seven hours is a reasonable amount of time. Yes. Okay. You would think more than one person would click like. And you know, the person <laughs> yeah. who clicked like is probably the person who Vic published Scott the article. Said, this is a self like from the Yes, creator. it's a self like. You know, it's a self like. <laughs> They're like posted in thumbs up. Absolutely. I mean, so, seriously. Let's go through this real quick. Okay. Because we caught one of these in their infancy. This is new. It's called mm-hmm. Daily Bay. Yeah. Uh, this is another one. How many likes did this one get? Uh, so this is nine hours ago. There's something about the air show, yeah. okay? And it got one like. Oh, one. One. So one self like. Again, yes. So let's have a look. Uh, next, we have, what is this? Oh, this is an event. They set up an event. So yes. 500,000 people that mm-hmm. just joined, by the way. This is brand new. Yeah. 500,000 people that just joined this account. Yeah. How many people went to the event? One. And the one person that went <laughs> is a poison leprechaun. <laughs> Why is he poison? Though? He is. He's just a freaking poison <laughs> leprechaun. Why is he poison? Because he is his poison. He's a little poisonous toad. Yeah, this is like a shield that works with Chinese yeah. government. Anyway, um, one person went. One person this, went. Uh, it's a poisonous like leprechaun. That. Yeah. So they had a live stream, right? Mm-hmm. And the live stream was for this air show to show China's military capability. Right. By the way, which is hilarious because these this guy, Poison Leprechaun. Yeah. He's there talking about how amazing this, like, mil- it's a white monkey job, by yeah, the way. Yeah. He's talking about how amazing this military technology is looking at, like, missile rocket launchers and stuff. That shit's going to be used against you, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't join the Chinese <laughs> PLA. Here, no, no, right? definitely not. The shit's made to destroy the West. <laughs> sure. Right? Anyway, um, 
these guys, they think they're going to be on the right side of history, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, so if you look at this, so that had one like, one like, one person attended, right? Yes. So look how many views this got. It got 100 and something this thousand got, views. I believe this is probably embedded into their like uh, yes. China side of social media or something. Some, sure. Something. It's been embedded. Well, yeah. So, so they do these things to make it, uh, to hit quotas. Mm. So nobody, so you can see what's important. That yeah. post about that got one like wasn't important to go show a CCP official, hey, we got this amount. Mm. This air show was very important to them. Yeah. So what they do is they set it up to get 100, you know, not just one like this time, now they're going to get 100 something thousand views. And they yeah. can go, hey, mm. CCP boss, we got this many people and look at this white guy did the presentation. But there's also a problem with this because with 150,000 views, there were only, what, 50, 58, yeah, I mean, 56 the comments? Horrid. It's horrid. 56 comments on 100 and, uh, on 150,000 views. Yeah. It shows you. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Anyway, we just want to say we, we figured out another one. There are so many of these, ac yeah. these accounts which are just absolutely false, fake accounts. I mean, they're real accounts, but the, the followers and the, yeah. you know, the size of them is fake. Yeah. You know, there are services that you can buy, and it can be from India, Vietnam, China, wherever, where you can buy followers. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. You can be like, I want 100,000 followers. Yeah. And you pay them money, and then they'll get their, they've got their little bot farm there. They've got people, one person with like 60 cell phones in front of them, and they'll go like, join, yes. join, 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 join. And they've each got like a SIM card in it, and they've each set up a YouTube account and a Facebook account and a whatever account yeah. on each phone, multiple yeah. ones, and they run scripts. And then it'll just go and, you know, subscribe and leave a fake comment. That's why sometimes you see stupid comments that don't seem to make any Doesn't sense. Doesn't make any sense, yeah. It's like just some random thing. Oh, I like your stuff so much. Right. That kind of thing. And it's got nothing to do with the video. Mm. Um, it's quotas. So, yeah, it's quotas. Quotas work in every single aspect of Chinese society mm. because that's how the government operates. And it's exactly like their disinformation, misinformation campaigns Correct. abroad. It's <clears throat> also quotas. Yeah. Please stop allowing these accounts to exist. I know. What are you doing? You're taking up server space. I know. Get I out know. of here. Bandwidth. You're wasting our bandwidth. Yeah, we could get be, off the internet. could be streaming some Netflix in like 8K quality for or sure. something, but instead we've got Chinese Facebook bot accounts using up that bandwidth for their crappy live streams of a Juhai show. I'll make an ultimatum and a, and a deal that? with them now. Yeah. Happy to allow all those accounts to, to exist. I don't even care about the fake accounts, but... Allow Chinese people to use sure. Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. If Chinese people Open are allowed, that's though. fine. But yeah. that's not fair mm. that the Chinese government gets to use this and, and flood it with fake garbage propaganda. You let your own people do it, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Imagine a Chinese person could go to that air show and make a live stream and talk that's about fine. it. That's fine. It would be organic content. Yes. And it would be nope. fine. No, it's not, though. Only it's just, the government's allowed to just use Just government garbage propaganda. And that's why when you see anything coming out of China on any of your social media whether it's Facebook or Twitter or yeah. YouTube or whatever, you know it's Chinese government because yeah. the local people are not allowed to post nope. things. And if somebody does post something and it goes viral or people see it, they will get into trouble. Yes. They'll get into huge trouble. Yes. So you're only seeing Chinese government fluff piece garbage. So when you see this stuff about, oh, look at Huawei's 5G coal mining or this green initiative, Paid that's government something that the Chinese government has concocted and made up for you to see yes. and it's made specifically for foreigners to see that's why yeah. it's on these platforms foreigners meaning you yeah you like non-chinese people you know in in china chinese people so it's all garbage remember that every time you see some youtuber on who lives in china posting something they're posting only what they're allowed to post you know yep. Yep. and you don't see chinese people walking around doing it and if you could, you would see a more honest picture of China. Unfortunately, we will not see that while the CCP is in power. Yeah. Anyway, it's time for us to hit Yamcha. What yeah. do you reckon? Let's do it. Guys, Yamcha is our Q&A. This is where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Oh, you haven't said that in a while. Mm. And of course, it's that time of the show where we get to relax, answer your super chats. I get to loosen so I, the tie. So button, button. I mean, if you want to, you can. No one's stopping you. I think people might not like that <laughs> you know <laughs> you never know I, 